Welcome everybody, happy Wednesday. And welcome back. Games Bond. Finally, we are making our return to this epic quest that keeps getting interrupted left and right <laughs> by illness, by injury, by real life goings on, and who knows what else. Are we here? We're gonna play some Bond. Odd model, what is up? Hope you are doing well. Lurkers in chat, VOD viewers, etc., etc. Welcome, everybody, and I hope you are all fine and dandy this Wednesday. I am uh, in a good mood, if for no other reason than I'm recovering a lot faster from my being sick than I was expecting. <laughs> um, and I'm fairly awful cold, but it basically uh, seemed to uh, just blow over in a couple of days, which is a uh, better fortune than I was uh, stricken with the last couple of times I had similar symptoms, so I'm glad about that. I am also on vacation this week. It's the weird, like, <laughs> transitioning from working to being on vacation is always a little bit funky, but then you throw getting sick in the mix and it's just, I don't know, reality is hazy and the idea of what time it is, what day it is, everything is just a complete... It's just a fog. Um, and I suppose that's partially why we're here a little bit early. <laughs> uh, but mostly, uh, you know, not rushing back home from work to stream. I find myself uh, a little more restless, a little more bored. And I was like, man, I just want to play, play some Bond. So uh, let's, you know, not sit around for several hours just waiting for 6 p.m. It's like, you know, fuck it. We're going to start early. <laughs> um, so we will eventually, soon enough, get to James Bond 007 The Duel for the Sega Master System, which will be the game that we're going to be playing today. Subspace Hoppercopter. Oh, chums indeed. Uh, not a lot of housekeeping per se. We are, you know, back on kind of a regular cadence of streams here. Um, but uh, a few things. Um, I did receive a package directly delivered from Q Branch. Uh, it is the, uh, the equipment we will need for our next mission. The next official mission, anyway, which is, of course, going to be Goldeneye for the N64. I don't have a Nintendo 64, nor do I have, or did I have, I should say, any sensible means by which to um, okay. Barbara falling off. Any sensible means of um, approximating the experience. All right, we got the finest. Only the finest in Chinese packaging here. Um, I have no idea how this thing will, you know, handle. Uh, but I figured build quality can't reasonably much be much worse than the actual official N64 controllers, right? Um, buttons feel like maybe a little more than I would be used to, but you know, it's brand new, so I guess that makes perfect sense. Um, yeah, buttons feel like buttons themselves seem like they're a little bit more like sharp. I feel like I would expect them to be a little more rounded, a little more convex on a rail controller. But otherwise, it seems you know, I don't know when the last time was that I actually held an N64 controller. Um, probably when I was in college and I was at a friend's place and they had like a garage with a big like gaming room um, and we played a couple of games of GoldenEye in multiplayer actually and this would have been in 2000 
2005, 2006. That's probably the last time I can recall. Well, when I was living in Japan, when I was in college, yeah, there might have been an N64 at some point somewhere that I might have played once or twice. That doesn't seem entirely impossible. Either way, it's been somewhere between 15 and 20 years, likely, <laughs> uh, since I held an actual N64 controller. So based on my hazy recollection, um, it seems uh, reasonable enough. Also, I just realized the music's pretty loud, isn't it? Uh, we got some hot Zuntata jams. It's not the worst, but uh, maybe a little bit intense to talk over. Uh, but yeah, the N64 controller is such a weird beast that I figured uh, I need one of these if I'm going to be emulating something uh, in terms of... I, well, emulating, I mean, uh, not in the I'm playing MAME sense. I mean, approximating <laughs> the experience of actually having played this on an original uh, console. Um, I'm sure there... I mean, with GoldenEye in particular, obviously, there are people who have done all kinds of ROM and emulator hacks to allow for, like, mouse control and all kinds of weird shit. Um, but the N64 controller is such uh, a key part of the authentic N64 experience that I figured uh, I don't have much choice. I need to have one of these so that we can experience GoldenEye. Uh, as well as there's at least one or two other games, right? There's... There's a Tomorrow Never Dies game, or a World Is Not Enough, or maybe both, I forget, on N64. Um, not to mention, of course, just, I, it's nice to have one of these in general for any other N64 emulator needs. You know, for, for plenty of games, if I wasn't, like, because for this project, I, I like having, uh, you know, kind of an authentic experience if I can. Um... But for a lot of other stuff on N64, if I'm more concerned with like actually playing the game, uh, maybe the controller aspect is not as important. But for certain games, I reckon the particular control setup probably makes it a little difficult or awkward to try to map it to a different type of controller. So for those situations, uh, it's really nice to have one of these on hand. Um, I just posted, by the way, on my Discord a few hours ago, if that. Um, I saw there was a tweet that was like advertising uh, Neo Geo uh, CD style controllers uh, that 8 bit are making. And I was like, oh, maybe I want to get one of those because I don't have one of those. It's got the clicky stick and it's a little bit, you know, unique. And it's like, I really don't need it. Probably within literal arm's reach, I have like at least one, two, three, four, I guess. Although technically that's the one. It was in one of those boxes. So I guess that doesn't count, but one, two, three, four different kinds of like USB or wireless controllers. Say nothing of the additional 12 probably <laughs> that's in this drawer and none of the boxes everywhere else. So it's not like I need one. Uh, but as it turns out, I buy a lot of things that I don't need. <laughs> so who knows? Maybe I'll grab one of those. <laughs> uh, but this one, at least, you know, uh, for everything I buy that I don't need, this is at least a thing that has a specific use case, so I'm looking forward to, to making good use of that. And, uh, yeah, because GoldenEye is not far off. We will get into a little bit more detail on upcoming missions for Games Bond in a moment. First, let's, uh, crack open. Uh, I, I wasn't able to, to make the trek the shop that has uh, our good friend Kong Strong, so we had to make do with the monster today. Ultra gold. Only the only the finest for games bond. <clears throat> I have no idea what this flavor is, but not too bad. <clears throat> But without further ado, let's take a look at some um, Games Bond mission briefing information, shall we? This is what we have on the agenda today. We are going to be playing James Bond 007 The Duel. 
James Bond is back, pitting his wits and firepower against many of his old adversaries in an attempt to rescue the daughter of Professor Michael Jones. Brilliant multi-screens and fantastic animated action make this a Master System tour de force. I'd noted before, so all these little, um, I don't know what you'd call these, um, synopses, little information snippets that I put together for all these games, they're kind of from, from various sources, but most of the time uh, they're from like Moby Games or sometimes from game FAQs wherever appropriate they're kind of snipped from official synopses or descriptions from uh, the back of boxes or for ads or that kind of thing um, so I didn't necessarily write them myself but I did some editing here and there to make them fit the format but I noted in the descriptions for the two different versions of the duel the Mega Drive game and this like they kind of seem to describe different plots um, and I, in preparation for the stream today, I grabbed hold of the manual, or a manual, I should say, um, for the Master System version of this game, which seemed to not necessarily align with what's described here, uh, but also not entirely with the Mega Drive version either, so it's... It's a little bit mysterious, and this port in general is quite mysterious, uh, and we'll get into some of that when we take a closer look later on. Uh, and we will, of course, go over the manual in detail before we start playing the game, so we have all the information we need for a successful mission. I would be remiss, as always, but especially today, not to uh, bring up the Q Branch Research Funding Initiative, uh, because we are dangerously close to our next goal. We have amassed 14,120 Q credits and we need a mere 880. Is that how that works out? A couple of hundred more to reach our goal of 15,000. And those credits will be converted from bits and from subs and all those kinds of things you can do to support the channel. Once we have reached our goal of 15,000, we will unlock the facilities, the abilities, and everything else we need to take on secret mission number three. Secret missions number one and two, in case you weren't around or have forgotten, or of course, Shaken But Not Stirred for the ZX Spectrum by Richard Shepard. Uh, this game was pretty dang cool. Um, it had like three different parts that played very differently. Um, there was this sort of text adventure thing, if you can describe it that way, where you traveled around the world with text commands and had to do like text-based combat. Um, then we had to explore the island of Dr. Death before venturing into the first person 3D maze where we had to escape the wrath of Paws before we could finally defeat Dr. Death. It was a pretty sick game. Number two, also from 1982 by Scott Morgan, was 007 Aqua Base, a more traditional text parser adventure for the Texas Instrument TI-99. And this game was like pretty terrible. <laughs> it was, it made for a fun stream, it was entertaining, but as an adventure game, it was not well designed. Uh, the opponent, what's up by the way, I don't think I said hi, nice to see you. You know, we've played a couple of text adventures for this project, uh, and I frankly have not been particularly impressed with any of them. It would be fun to have a good excuse at some point to play actual good text adventures, just to kind of convince myself that they exist. Because <laughs> uh, these Bond ones, I don't know. I mean, this one was just like incredibly basic. Um, there was like no real room for anything beyond the actual critical path forward. It was kind of weird, but you know, for a 1982 game by some dude, yeah, could have been worse. Could have been worse. It wasn't, you know, endlessly frustrating at least. So we'll take that. Secret mission number three will remain top secret until funding has been secured. Um, so with a little bit of luck, <clears throat> we might squeeze in these final uh, funding scraps uh, in time to check out secret mission number three before we move on to the official on the books sanctioned 
mission number 17, which will be GoldenEye 007. Uh, then again, maybe people are less excited about postponing this any further. <laughs> <laughs> which would be fair enough i've been looking forward to this and i'm sure a lot of other people have too the, i think it goes without saying that this is one of the kind of flagship games of this entire project and i would imagine that for several people who have been following this project this may very well be chronologically the first game in this entire challenge that people are even like aware of existing before this um because most of the stuff we've played so far has been like European computer games and uh, you know those were certainly quite uh, prolific and quite you know ubiquitous for those of us who grew up in Europe playing computer games uh, but for those who didn't you might be excused for not having really experienced or seen any of them before uh, but GoldenEye on the N64 I think is uh, hard to to you know have entirely missed and uh, it's a game I've played in the past, but I haven't properly really played the campaign from beginning to end, so I'm really looking forward to doing that. Uh, I'm very excited to play this, and I'm excited to rewatch the movie ahead of playing this game, something I also have not done in many, many years. So we'll see. If we manage to wrap up the duel on today's stream, I would say we are likely looking at a Friday movie night uh, to watch GoldenEye on Friday, so that we may potentially dive right into it on saturday stream um but we'll see we'll see uh we will uh we will give james bond 007 the duel or the sega master system it's uh it's fair due we will play it properly we're not gonna rush it or uh you know skip anything or uh you know any other half measures in the name of getting to goldeneye faster we'll get there when we get there so for today, we will be looking at this game right here. So I mentioned uh, a little while ago that this game is a little bit mysterious. Um, I think late era Master System games tend to have a slight air of mystery around them in general. You know, there's this thing you, you tend to hear very often which I, it's like a big pet peeve of mine. <laughs> when people, um, whenever a game is brought up in any kind of context, any conversation, that is a game that was like relatively late on its um, platform. Especially if like just the simplest kind of definition, a game that came out after the release of the like, the next generation console platform like nes games that came out after the super nintendo launched or ps2 games that came out after the ps3 launched or whatever that kind of thing uh, whenever a game like that comes up there's always this like to my you know in my mind weirdly large group of people who will go like wow this game came out after the next console oh my god that's so weird it's so late like did they still release games for this after that point like Yes, of course they did. <laughs> That's like super normal. Um, every single like generational shift with very few exceptions, that is like the norm that games keep shipping on the previous platform that has like the much bigger install base, smaller development budgets, etc. for like a good couple of years. I think there's like the two examples I can think of off the top of my head where that is like basically not true at all. Um, well, three maybe. Uh, the two I were thinking of were the Saturn and the original Xbox, where Sega and Microsoft, respectively, were kind of kind of in a rush to release the next platform, and they kind of killed support for the previous platform um, very quickly. Like, if you look at the Saturn, the Saturn was popular in Japan. It was Sega's like most popular system, probably by a pretty significant margin in Japan. Um, and, uh, but after the Dreamcast launched in 1998, there's like very few uh, Saturn releases. Um, and with the Xbox, like the 360 launched in late 05, and there's like a couple of, you know, you know, 
the, the PS3 launched a year later, but in that first year, like you got some games that were on like PS2, Xbox, and 360. Um, but Microsoft themselves, like for sure, didn't seem like they were all in on, like they they kind of, well, I don't want to say rushed the 360 to market, but they were like they wanted to be first, and they were all in on like the next gen. So they they didn't really keep releasing too much stuff, and you know. Games did come out on the Xbox, of course, after that, but you know, it pretty it fell off pretty quickly. But the third one I was uh, thinking of too was like the N64, I guess. Um, the N64 was arguably like it wasn't a hugely successful platform, and it was getting long in the tooth. I would say, you know, before the GameCube launched in 2001. Um, so there's probably not many post GameCube N64 games, um, but. For basically all other consoles, especially like really big popular ones, um, games kept coming out for a long time afterwards. Like if you look at the the NES and the Super Nintendo, I think if people think back to some of their most like well-liked games or like some of the more popular big cool games for the NES, like I would say a good chunk of them came out after the Super Nintendo. It wasn't like some weird thing where only a handful of late games came out that late like the super nintendo launched in 1990 um and in 1990 like i don't know the nes had like barely caught on in, in europe um so it's like a totally normal thing the reason i went on this whole pirate is to just provide a little bit of context for the master system which certainly had this phenomenon and it was not a strange thing per se because the master system was quite popular in europe um I had, like, Scandinavia, which is, like, Nintendo capital of Europe, basically. Um, we still had, like, I had a lot of friends growing up who had Master Systems. Like, in my tiny little community, um, I would say it was probably pretty evenly split. Like, I probably had as many friends who had Master Systems as I had friends who had Nintendos. Um, so it was, you know, the Master System was popular. And this would have been around you know 90 91 92 you know plus minus a few years um it wasn't as if those consoles like everyone got a super nintendo or a mega drive in 1990 and then like didn't keep any of the old systems you know so these games these systems were around but master system has this kind of interesting like big divide in success and popularity between different regions of the world where in Europe and of course especially Brazil which is a unique um, I don't know scenario <laughs> um, the master system kept like getting big releases or big I don't know kept getting proper real games like this one well into the 90s whereas in Japan and in North America the master system was kind of it was around very briefly and when the Mega Drive launched it, there was kind of I guess either no like resources to support them both or probably like there was no justification in the market to keep supporting both like I don't know when the kind of last North American uh, Master System release came out, but I, I recall hearing something that like Sonic 2 made it out, but that was about it. And it, it probably had been a bit of a drip feed before then. And in Japan, like it, it's weirder still because kind of the, <clears throat> the Mega Drive launched in uh, the fall of 1988. And I feel like at that point, the, the Mark III was already kind of, you know, they were kind of done with it. <laughs> Uh, even though there kept being like games developed in Japan for like primarily the European market, it's 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 a little unusual, and that's kind of what I mean with like late Master System stuff being a little bit mysterious because you have like European developed games that came out in Europe, you have Japanese games, you have of course Tech Toys own like official hacks uh, where they changed uh, like for for Mega Drive and Master System games like the characters of games to local comic book characters and stuff 
and you have of course tech toys like game gear to master system ports uh, because the game gear was supported um because you know obviously there was the game boy but as far as like sega there wasn't a successor to the game gear um you know throughout the 90s so the game gear was around i think the lost world which is japanese developed too i believe which would have come out in 97 uh with the movie that game came out for the game gear in i think all regions and that's like the the last major release i can think of so the game gear was around well into the 90s and because the game gear and master system are so similar on a hardware level um it is broadly speaking quite simple to convert master system games or uh, game gear games to master system um and for tech toy who were publishing the master system in brazil this was a, a like a relatively simple or affordable i suppose uh, either way a, a practical pipeline to get like more games to put on master system cartridges and, and release so there's quite a few games off the top of my head the first one that comes to mind is mortal kombat 3. mortal kombat 3 had a game gear release in europe and america uh, but in brazil it also had a master system release which was just a straight port of the gg version and i'm sure there's plenty of other games like that and that actually ties into this game potentially and we'll try to do a little bit of digging and see what we can uh, figure out what's up macaw insane japanese lineup for master system in europe they made tons of random ultra enthusiastic games that were cool but obviously like two weeks in development yeah it's 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 interesting to see like i don't know maybe we can <laughs> Uh, in case you missed it, there was a, what was it, like a 270 page PDF or something that dropped a couple of days ago of like internal Sega of America emails from like 96 or something. Um, ton of stuff. Well, I guess they weren't all from 96, but like from some time period uh, in the mid 90s. So there's a lot of like, um, you know, corporate communication about like uh business dealings and marketing and stuff like that for the saturn uh like i've just seen glimpses of what stuff uh people have posted on twitter but it's like really fascinating some looks at games or not looks at as in like videos of the games but like mention of marketing plans and whatnot for games that didn't end up being released and um some some budgets and like other numbers and stuff it's like pretty fascinating insight um and yeah it would have been fascinating to kind of get a better glimpse at what led to some of those um master system projects happening just based on like who would have been around to do it like what the potential market would have been like how many people can we sell this to and like how do you how do you make those kind of decisions i guess it's it is pretty interesting Um, so how does this all tie in with James Bond 007 The Duel? Well, it is a 1993 Master System game, and people who have not done any, like, I was going to say first-person research, what's the word? <laughs> first-hand? Uh, unless you have had reason to try to find answers to certain questions about who made a game or when did this game come out or did this game come out where did it come out etc i think people grossly overestimate how well documented these kind of things are um, there's a lot of stuff that is not well documented at all and there is a lot of stuff that is incorrectly documented um i you know, I'm not going to pretend like I'm some uh, seasoned researcher when it comes to this stuff. But anytime I do a project like this where I'm playing a lot of games, you know, I want to I want to get the information about the game right. I want to make sure to the best of my ability that I know who actually made each of the games and what platform they came out on, etc. So the first order of business is usually just check Moby Games and Game FAQs, cross-reference them and see what I can find you know, what logos do I see on the box? What credits are available on Moby Games or in the game itself? And like, 
If you have done this kind of thing before, you are not surprised at all. <laughs> but if you haven't, you might be surprised to, to learn how often stuff like this is not like documented correctly. Um, on a basic level, like developers and publishers often get um, conflated. I would say the biggest like culprit for this kind of thing is whenever a game, either a game that came out on one platform and got ported to other platforms or something closer to this kind of situation where there's like a title or a concept that has multiple games released on different platforms it is quite common for one company to get credit for all of them even though they only did one version or in some cases maybe didn't even do any of them um and when you have something like this where the mega drive game i think is fair to say was kind of the the bigger main release and this master system game was kind of developed to accompany it um presumably you know to primarily sell in regions where the master system had a, a large install base um and there are no credits in the game or in the manual as far as i'm aware like it's not super easy to know who actually made it and i was a little bit confused when i was trying to look into this in fact i didn't really i wasn't intending to to research it exactly it was more something came up that caught my eye and had me a little confused because when i put together the spreadsheet with all the information for all the games i did that over a year ago i did that well in advance of actually starting this project in october of last year so i'd spent a good couple like weeks months um just tinkering away at it slowly over time. I probably started it actually in 2021 at some point, just compiling the list of games and the information and everything. And I had always put this down as being developed by the Kremlin, who are of course the developer of the Mega Drive game. And from the looks of things like, yeah, this game appears to be reusing some assets and like I had no particular reason to disbelieve what I had seen about it being um, made by the same people, or at least the same studio. But even even saying that, like, I the British development scene is so like peculiar too, where you have, I mean, mostly on the microcomputers, I suppose. But like, there's so many games made by like Ocean or US Gold or something where they they would have just basically had some dude on contract or maybe you know outsourced it to some development team uh who are definitely not gonna have a credit on them for the most part so it's it's all pretty unclear it's not super easy but the reason that it, i had i was confused about this was i had this game lined up and i thought i had it all good to go um a couple of weeks ago and I booted it up and I noticed that it ran at a very awkward slow speed. And I thought that was a little bit weird because, okay, this might be a, a primarily like European game. And if that's the case, if anything, it should be running too fast if I'm playing it on my NTSC Japanese Mega Drive. So I was really confused by that. And I thought I had seen the game in motion looking much faster. So I looked up some videos just to make sure I wasn't insane. And yeah, lo and behold, any video I could find, just at least the first three or four ones on YouTube, all ran the game much faster than the version I had. I tried it on emulator. I tried switching regions. I tried different things. And I, the, the image I had of the game just ran much slower. So I went to dig for other versions of the game. And in my, like hunt for different rom dumps as well as watching uh, like just checking out some of these videos to see how the game ran i saw an, an inconsistency that had me a little confused so this game was released according to sega retro um in europe north america and brazil well i should say pal regions because i guess it might have come out in australia as well and um you know the kremlin is a british developer so it could be developed for pal and yeah all right okay it makes sense but like the rom image that i had was labeled as ue as in uh, usa europe so it's the same rom image 
that would be on the cartridge for the US version and the PAL version. And that's not unusual um, for Master System or Mega Drive games. That's quite common. Um, and in those situations, typically, uh, whether you play that cartridge on a PAL system or on an NTSC system, uh, there's no region locking and you might get um, some text changes or some things like that. There's like a lot of Sega first party games for the Mega Drive are like that, uh, at least until 93 or whenever it was they introduced the region locking. Um, and in those cases, like if you play it on a 50 hertz PAL console, it would run slower, it would be in English, and if you run it on a 60 hertz Japanese console, the game, depending on the game, might be in Japanese or not, but it would run faster at, at like 60 hertz speed. Um, and that again had me like really confused. Like if that's the case, then why is it running slow for me? But when I did some digging, I was able to grab some other images. So I have a couple of different ones. And I had seen again in the YouTube videos that I checked trying to research this game, that some of them appear to have a slightly different intro sequence with a one screen of text that's different. Um, I forget, we can take a look at it uh, when we boot the game up. Um, but basically there's like one, there's like a, uh, there's a title screen where we see the Bond image. There's like different, um, just walls of text scrolling by with some legal text and copyright stuff and some game info and whatever. And one of them I think had a credit to the Kremlin. And in some other version of the game, it instead says um, conversion by bizarre except bizarre is like misspelled b-i-z-z-a-r-e with two z's instead of two r's so and when i first saw this like wait is this like bizarre creations <laughs> did they work on this like wait no hang on it's not even spelled the same way and from what i heard um this mysterious bizarre group uh i tried to look them up on moby games and like they I forget if they even either didn't like exist or there or was like attached like two games or something. Uh, but someone had pointed out, I think on my discord that it, it had been mentioned in some Sega retro discussion thread or something that uh, Bizarre were also credited on some other Master System port of a Game Gear game or something. So I was wondering like could Bizarre be a Brazilian studio or, or a studio that is attached somehow to converting games for the Brazilian market, primarily porting Game Gear games to Master System? Uh, maybe there could be some kind of PAL NTSC conversion thing going on too, because Brazil has its own like PAL 60 format, I think. Uh, it's like a different, it's a unique uh, beast, at least. It's not the... North American standard, but it's not the European standard either. And I haven't been able to, to get a clear answer to that, but like because this game was in fact released in Europe, and I think Australia and North America, it would seem odd to me. Like, it would, it would seem strange just on the surface level for a Brazilian outfit to be involved with something that's not just done locally for the Brazilian market. Could it be that this was made for the Brazilian market, but then like released elsewhere? It, stuff like this, like it seems like the kind of thing where asking these questions is silly because like, well, how could those kind of things not even be known? But there you go, for these kind of minor releases, there just is no documentation really. It's hard to say, um, at least, you know, based on my admittedly limited research. But I found it interesting because it, it was like a little bit of a rabbit hole that I wasn't expecting. Um, and when we play the game, we can boot up the, the fast speed version and the slow speed version. Uh, to my ears, I would say that the slower speed is probably what the music is supposed to sound like. But the gameplay is like extremely sluggish and awkward. And that could still be by design. But when you compare them side by side, the faster one doesn't seem like it's running too fast. It seems like more reasonable but the music sounds like it's going too fast. And who knows, that could be a hardware situation. Like maybe if you play it on a real Brazilian master system, the music runs slower or something, like crazier things have happened, right? 
Uh, or maybe they fucked it up. Uh, who knows? Who knows? But from my understanding, at least based on how the ROM dumps are labeled, the Brazilian version is the one that runs at the faster speed on my Mega Drive, but also when I tested it on emulator. Which, again, I'm so confused. Like, the game if the game ran on the same speed... If the game ran at the same speed on a European PAL console and a North American NTSC console, why it then would run faster on a Brazilian PAL, whatever it is, console? I don't know. It is mysterious for sure. Uh, but we, I think we'll most likely stick with the faster version. But we can, uh, we should definitely look at both, uh, if nothing else, so I can just share my findings and uh, you guys can worry slightly less about me just going completely insane over this weird shit. <laughs> <clears throat> but before we we dig ourselves any deeper uh let's take a look at the manual <clears throat> what's up left empty bond is indeed back bond is back and he is blue this is amazing photocopy quality here uh so i believe that this according to how it was labeled on sega retro is the is an Australian manual. I don't know, Macaw45 or other Australians in chat, if you are familiar with what local um, Master System releases might have looked like, uh, maybe you can help uh, affirm or deny. <clears throat> oh man, chat's popping off for Blue Bond. <laughs> What's up, Zavera, Skeleton and Stick Bug, Sang Dream, welcome everybody. Uh, Brun and G, by the way, I don't think I said hello. Thank you for the friendly reminder, as always. <clears throat> Some of the boxes have the crappy grid. Yeah, I think, like in Europe, we... I don't know if you had different... Because I um, I know that for the Mega Drive, um, the, the local distributor of... Uh, like, Australian distributor of Mega Drive games had, like, shit budget, so... There were, like, a lot of cardboard boxes. Um... Which I think was like sort of unrelated or different from the American cardboard boxes. Because um, we never had those in Europe. Like there was, ne well, the singular exception I think is Sonic and Knuckles. I think that came in a cardboard box everywhere for whatever reason. Uh, I know it did in Japan. Um, I, I had a friend from Australia who was very upset about those things. <laughs> Um, but yeah, as far as like the, um, the Master System boxes, like by the time we got into this era, for sure, um, most of them did look kind of like this one, where you have the, the grid, the grid is there, but they're sticking like real box art onto the grid. Uh, it's not like the, the, um, the American slash early days of like one crude little hand drawn doodle in the corner on this empty grid. Um. So when I think of like my childhood and friends who had Master System games, um, I can barely remember any of those kind of covers. Like most of the ones I can remember were more like this. Uh, they still had a grid, of course, but yeah, they would still like proper artwork on it. Anyway, <laughs> I digress. Read before using your Sega video game system. All right, I think we can. Uh, I think we can survive without reading the epilepsy warning. Um, oh, here we go. Game background. An evil mastermind, Professor Graypen, has devised a fiendish plan to take control of the world governments. He has constructed an artificial island somewhere in the Pacific Ocean, using his billions made from international arms trading. From this island, he plans to launch a shuttle containing a deadly high-powered laser station into outer space. From its geostationary orbit, it will be able to destroy any target on Earth at Graypen's command. All world powers have held a summit and picked their best agents to complete the mission of going to the island and destroying the shuttle. One by one, all the agents have been terminated, except one, Bond 007. The future freedom of the entire world rests on your shoulders. Good luck, 007. <clears throat> uh, what's up, Father Axe Keeper? So Professor Graypen is not the name of the villain uh, in the Mega Drive game. Uh, it is also, well, I guess 
So what did the, the what was the information that we had here according to wherever this came from? Uh, the the daughter of Professor Michael Jones has been kidnapped. I mean, she maybe she's been kidnapped, but the manual doesn't seem to mention it. And I strongly doubt the game itself is going to give us any more on this lore. So I have no idea where this came from. But maybe this description is from like the American manual. And the one we're reading is the Australian manual, which just has a different story. Um, I, I believe this was the only manual that was on Sega Retro uh, for the Master System version. So we're just going to have to go on this, I guess. Uh, take control. Pause button. Press pause at any time to pause the game. The pause screen will show your score, lives, and mission number. Oh yeah, so this has like sub-weapons. It's a bit different from the uh, Mega Drive game. This is totally nearly fanfic territory. No, I wouldn't say that. It's just that like... I mean, it's like that for any game, right? The... You have some people making the game, and then you have some people making the box in Europe, and then you have a third group of people making the manual in Europe, and then you publish it in North America, and you have at least one or two groups of people doing the equivalent stuff over there, and they kind of put whatever they want. Like, it's just pretty typical. I mean, it's like we had <laughs> fucking, uh... Uh... Ah, shit, what was the... Live or Let Die? with the, the boat racing game that had like a just complete fictional description of the mission shit. Like everything on the back of the box that described the game was like, none of it was in the game and it didn't describe the game at all. It was just purely fictional. It was quite bizarre. Like it described like six different missions and in the game, there's literally one mission. <laughs> uh, good times. Yeah, <laughs> fantasy levels. <laughs> just delirious mission briefing of making stuff up it's like well he's not gonna survive that long so who knows like who cares if it's inaccurate anyway <laughs> uh yeah we can select weapons in pause mode bond can use three different weapons missiles grenades and rapid shots d button left right bond moves left and right down bond ducks directional button if on ladder left or right bond faces left or right Left or right held down, Bond jumps off ladder, left or right. Up and down, Bond climbs ladder. Button 1 makes Bond jump. With down, Bond slides down the ladder. With up, stops Bond from sliding down the ladder. It's like weird... <laughs> weirdly written, but it, it, it's it's pretty... Uh, pretty clear what it means. Um, yeah, the, <laughs> the fucking uh, Operation Stealth manual was... It's funny enough how, how, like, the manual made... On the one hand, like, the manual was crucial for being able to play that game. But the way the manual was written also made the game experience much worse. Because I literally spent the entirety of the, like, my time playing Operation Stealth, second guessing everything I did because it none of it lined up with how the gadgets were described in the manual and how their use was described. So I always had to wonder like, did I do something wrong? Like, is this really what's supposed to happen? Is this like, the manual builds up all this like excitement over all these cool gadgets and how they're supposed to be used. And then like the more intricate the description of a gadget was in the manual, the more completely mundane and like nothing the actual use of it was in the game. It was really strange. Um, oh yeah, no, this is a completely original story. Um, I would say, on average, probably most Bond games are not directly based on a film. Uh, and the ones they are... Uh, the ones that are, we will do our due diligence and watch the film on Discord. We will check out the trailers on stream and, and we'll compare... Uh, and contrast with the source material, but we don't really get that uh, luxury with most of the games. Uh, but this also came out at a time when the film fear, uh, film series was like completely dormant, uh, basically at least partially due to legal un untanglings that were going on at the time. So there was a big gap, well, big for the time, uh, between 1989 and 1995, where there were no Bond films coming out. So, um, this is literally like in the smack, like middle of that. 
yeah operation stealth is uh it's a bad game <laughs> it's got great art it's got cool music and it's got some neat little set pieces and moments but like the actual design of it as an adventure game in my opinion is quite terrible anywho button two makes bond fire followed by button a fires selected weapons so yeah i was messing with this a little bit when i was trying to get the game to run and trying out these different versions and yeah something with both buttons i guess to use your sub weapon but it's also it's funny how the mega drive game had the completely unhinged control scheme of jumping on the a button and shooting on the b button and using grenades on c um and not to be outdone uh, this version also has like inverted controls um, if you're unfamiliar with the master system controller button one is on the left and button two is on the right uh, so you're jumping on the left button and shooting on the right button which is not how it's supposed to be <laughs> uh, but it's okay i think there's actually an option to swap it in the game all right, we get descriptions of the missions. <clears throat> so here, here's where we get the full story of the game, basically. Mission one, Bond docks at the side of Graypen's research ship by means of a speedboat from a British naval frigate. This is the only way to get through the island's defenses. On board the ship, marine scientists are working on fuel research to power the shuttle into space. Graypen has hidden hostages on the ship to deter any armed takeover of the ship. Uh, mission 1-1. Board the outside of the ship and travel to the far side before climbing the upper decks. Beware, though, of falling crates, cranes, and sailors. Look out for porthole snipers who are crack shots. Mission 1-2. Once on board the top deck, Bond must rescue hidden hostages and climb along cables to the exit. There are sailors guarding the hostage cells, so beware. Mission 1-3. Bond climbs down the side of the ship to the jetty where the ship is docked. Look out for deadly robotic fish and stray rolling barrels. Climb up the highest part, highest piers to find Q cases, but watch out for automatic cranes. End of mission, Jaws. Bond meets his arch enemy Jaws, the man with the golden dentures. Not gold, I don't think, but okay, sure. You must shoot Jaws while leaping from one jetty to another, but Take care, Jaws doesn't touch Bond, or he'll grab him around the neck and throw him to the waiting sharks below. That's, they're making it sound pretty sick. Um, so already we can, like, the, the setting of the stage is the same as the Mega Drive game. You start on the boat, um, but the mission being split up into, like, three levels and the boss fight being a separate section is different. And in fact, like, the villains were in the Mega Drive game, of course, and the sprites were awesome. Like, uh, Jaws and Mayday were like so sick. Uh, Baron Samity shows up for two seconds and uh, Odd Job is in the final stage. Um, but they're not really, you can hardly call them boss fights. Uh, there's a final boss where you fight Jaws. Um, but otherwise these guys just sort of spawn and kind of stand there and it's pretty un, you know, threatening. But the fact that they're kind of sectioned off to their own proper boss encounter level in this is, Potentially promising. Um, so the, the stage gimmicks and level layouts and everything are different. And the, the, the controls and the mechanics are totally different. But a lot of the graphics, the tile sets and the bond sprites and everything are kind of uh, taken from the Mega Drive game. So the theme of the level sounds like they're kind of the same. Mission 2. Bond must now climb through the jungle to get to the top of the mountain. Grapen has constructed a huge power station here to produce all power for his island. Bond must destroy the power station before making the dangerous journey to the bottom again. Yeah, sounds pretty similar. 2-1. Use the vines to climb the trees, walk along the branches and rough platforms. Bond must take care, though. Some branches may break when you stand on them, sending him to his demise. There are snakes, dart guns, and machine gun commandos. It's so confusing the way it's written, where it's like they're using... They're interchangeably using you and bond so sometimes they're talking about him and what he must do it's like bond must be careful not to trip on anything or you will get hurt and it's like wait they keep mixing it up and it's a little bit confusing i mean you understand it of course but uh, it's a bit weird 
Uh, Lariah, what's up? Have I ever played the System Shock games? Uh, not really. I think I played one of them extremely briefly for like five minutes at the time, but they never really interested me too much. <clears throat> two, two. Once on top of the mountain, Bond must travel along the secret base to the power station in the middle. Once there, destroy the plasma sphere to disable the power plant. But take care, it's well guarded. Look out for robotic snakes, homing guns, and automatic sentry guns. Robot snakes, okay. That's definitely not in the Mega Drive version. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, two, three. Bond must now climb back down the mountainside, but it's easy to get lost with many dangerous falls. Use falling branches to your advantage, which will break your fall. How is this? Like, what is this? Did, Macaw, did you write this? The English is quite questionable. Well, not the English, not like not the grammar, but the, just the, the sentence structure. I don't know. But watch out for the dark guns. End the mission, Bones. That's right. For some reason, they 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 keep calling Baron Samity Bones. At the base of the mountain is a graveyard. This is home to Bones, the Prince of Voodoo. He will appear and disappear as if by magic, and is an expert knife thrower. Dude, like, they're making the boss fights sound so exciting in this version. I, I'm I'm pretty hyped, but I'm also like fully expecting it to not live up to it at all. Um. I'm also curious, like, the way they describe the levels also sound, like, somewhat intricate. Uh, I'm really not sure. Like, from the... I, I've played, like, a minute into the first stage, and there's no, like, HUD indicator with the hostages or anything like that, like, in the Mega Drive game. So I have no idea. Um, I guess Mission 1-1 one, one doesn't mention hostages, so maybe there aren't any on that stage. I'm not sure. Like, in the Mega Drive game, it's pretty, like, you you rescue hostages, or I think you plant bombs. It's something... No, I think all stages you find hostages, and then once you've found every hostage, you have to set a bomb. And when you set the bomb, there's a time limit to exit the level. Um, and the boss fights just sort of happen in the middle of all that. In some stages, like in uh, the second stage, the jungle stage, or it's more like a forest, actually, um... Baron 70 just like he's in the like first third of the stage he's just like like boop, just comes out of the ground and he stands there and chucks knives or whatever you just crouch under them and shoot him for five seconds and then he dies and then that's it um but here like i don't know it's it sort of sounds like there's more to the levels uh and that the flow and mechanics might be a little bit different so i'm, I'm really curious to see how that all ties together on the screenshot to the right there is probably not the easiest thing to make out but it looks to me, just being familiar with the Mega Drive version graphics, that in that little striped box is a hostage waiting to be rescued. So it looks like they are in the game, at least. <coughs> Can't wait to fight Papa Shango. I mean, if the fights are as cool as they sound, neither can I. Mission 3. Bond enters an artificial volcano designed by a grey pen to protect his research labs. This is where the shuttle launch control is housed. Bond must rescue more hidden hostages in this mission, but take care as the volcano may be fake, but the lava isn't. 3-1. <laughs> Tr travel through tunnels, avoiding the lava flows by using automatic platforms. Be careful of sentry robots, lava balls, and hot water geysers. 3-2. Bond must now climb the shaft of the volcano. Use the platforms to get higher, but take ca take care of the lava producing shoots. Be very careful, there are no mission restarts for this mission. Wh what? What does that mean? If you die on mission 3-2, you die in real life? It's just like the Force 1cc in the middle of the game for a single stage? I have no idea what that means. That's... Okay, sure. Well, just, I guess we'll just be very careful. I like that it says that in like every stage description. We gotta be careful of something. Take care not to whatever. Uh, I mean, I guess it's probably true. Probably should be careful. <clears throat> you really dislike manuals describing the whole game? I'm of two minds of it. I guess it depends on what it is. In this particular case, 
we've already played the Mega Drive version. There's not a lot of risk of, of spoiler and stuff, but I typically find it to be, uh, even back then or now, like, I think it's just cool to have a description of the stuff and especially reading about all this shit that sounds really cool. It like builds up the expectation of, of getting to experience it. But I think it's also like, um, it paints such a more vivid picture of what's going on, especially in a game like this, where there's probably no text, there's no explanation or description of anything. This is where you get the, you know, the, the kind of story of what's going on, but also you get context for what the level is supposed to be. And it doesn't really matter if this was the design intent from the beginning, or if it's just a, you know, marketing person retroactively filling in blanks. I think it still helps, like, make the whole thing feel more, uh, fleshed out but I think it's pretty cool like obviously in some cases the there might be stuff that's just like a big surprise that would be cool to see but I think depending on how you do it um, you can describe things in fairly like intricate detail without necessarily spoiling the experience of getting to see it and, and, and like encounter it yourself and of course, some games will have these kind of uh, elaborate descriptions and then they will deliberately just put a little question mark or something for like the final stage. And I think that's that's cool enough too. Uh, but I suppose, you know, the sort of surprise of seeing what things are, that only, you, know, like you only really get that once um, at best. Because a lot of times, you know, games might be really difficult and you might not even see those levels. So I think... I, for the most part, I think I'd rather have this kind of stuff than not. Uh, but I agree. I, I mean, obviously, it depends on what kind of game it is, and uh, it can it can kind of spoil a surprise for some things. I suppose. I mean, I'm not a big like spoiler freak anyway, um, so it like doesn't bother me too much. Um, but it, like in this case, I don't know, like. I think reading about the robotic snakes, for example, it gets me like pumped to see robot snakes in the game. Even though I feel like they're probably not, th th I'm gonna guess that there's not gonna be anything overtly robotic about them <laughs> visually in the game. So it's like, without having read this, I probably wouldn't pay them any attention. But now that we've read this, we'll get to that stage. We're gonna be like, oh shit, it's the robot snake. That's pretty sick, you know? Um, I guess I, I'm struggling to think of a particular example of, of something where I read something like this and it just like deflated the experience of like getting to see what it was. Um, but that's obviously, you know, some confirmation bias going on there too. Anyway, let's let's move along here. Mission 3-3. At the top of the volcano lies Graypen's research labs. Seek out all hidden hostages and use the platforms to get across the lava flows. End the mission, odd job. So he's in stage three. In the Mega Drive game, uh, Mayday is on stage three. <laughs> wow. Bond must now defeat the fiendish Oriental. Odd job. <laughs> well, that's, that's quite the description. <laughs> Odd job moves quite slowly, but his steel edged hat doesn't. Jump and duck to avoid Odd job's hat. Take care of the lava balls. How is this written? They had this much empty space and they still couldn't write a complete sentence. Uh, yeah, so in the Mega Drive game, when Oddjob shows up, you literally hold down to crouch and you keep shooting, and Oddjob will keep throwing his hat and it'll just go over your head and return. Like, you're literally not in danger at all. Uh, and that's kind of like how all the, the... The only, like, sort of dangerous boss, with the exception of the final boss, is Mayday, because you can approach her... Like, she's just patrolling back and forth on this platform. And the way the level design is, you can kind of come from above or below. And if you're coming from below, you can do a vertical gunshot. You can shoot your gun upwards. But there's no way to shoot downwards. So if you're coming from above, you need to drop down to her level. And she starts doing fucking karate kicks and just destroys you in two seconds. So you just got to make sure to come from below and it's easy. Uh, but all the other bosses, you just kind of stand there and crouch and you're fine. Uh, so I'm kind of hoping that we actually have to make an effort to fight them this time. It could be cool. Mission 4. 
Bond has reached the shuttle bay itself. Bond must find his way around the huge bay with many dead ends and long falls. Wow, that sounds promising. Avoid the shuttle engine tests and rescue the last of the hostages. Is there like one per level? <laughs> I guess we'll find out. 4-1. Bond must travel down the shuttle using gantry lifts and sometimes climbing onto the shuttle itself. Avoid the manic scientist and robot guards. Look out for the dangerous drops. Uh, mission 4-2. Bond must now climb under the shuttle. Be very careful of the shuttle engines as Great Pen is testing them ready for launch. There are many robot guards and sentry guns on this level. Have your grenades ready. Okay, how much you want to bet that the grenades are going to be useless? Find out. They were definitely quite useless in the Mega Drive version, except for the final boss where they were like crucial to my desperate, like, final success. Uh, but the the animation of throwing the grenades in the Mega Drive version is like two years long, uh, so they're quite difficult to use. The animation is incredible, though. Um, I'm curious to see how much of it is intact in this game. Mission 4-3, climb up the other side of the shuttle using the lifts to get you higher. Look out for holes on the shuttle wings and use these to help you climb up. Okay, more platforming. Final mission. Bond has reached the end of the shuttle bay. With his fuel supply cut off and the power station destroyed, Grapen has no chance of launching. He must now rescue the final hostages, but the shuttle bay is leaking radiation. I like the, 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 the way this is written. Immediately, like, and obviously making it sound like the evil professor villain has to rescue the hostages. But I think we can infer from common sense, if not the way it's written, that they're talking about Bond having to rescue the hostages, but that's fine. Bond must now rescue the final hostages, let's say. <laughs> but the shuttle bay is leaking radiation. Bond has only a short time to rescue the final hostages and leave the island before it blows up. Take great care of the fleeing guards. I don't know. I think it's interesting that the way it's all written, making it sound kind of more unique than it might be. Uh, but who knows? <clears throat> Crouch under Onjob's hat, isn't he like three feet tall? I mean, only in the N64 game. I think he is, you know, it's not like Sean Connery is like eight foot seven either. I mean, not that we're playing Sean Connery in this game, but, like, in the film, I mean. Um, although he is... The, the sprite for Oddjob <laughs> in the Mega Drive game is, is fairly stout as well. It's a good sprite. The, the, like, the, the art in these games are, like... The Kremlin had some fucking pretty insane pixel artists. Because um, they made the, uh, the Spy Who Loved Me for the Amiga, and that game had some amazing art. And the Mega Drive game, too, like, looks awesome. And this game, for the most part, as I'm aware, from what little I've seen of it so far, mostly reuses the same graphics. Um, so I'm really going to be curious to see if it, there's, like, any unique stuff in this, like, unique art assets. Um, the way they're describing certain things, like, make it sound like there might be, like, robot snakes and sentry robots and... I don't know. But yeah, no Mayday, and the final mission doesn't describe... Um, fighting the Professor or fighting Jaws. So I'm curious uh, if there is a boss or it's just some like final escape sequence or what. Yeah, because the uh, in the in the Mega Drive game there's the same four missions. There's the boat, there's the jungle, there's the volcano, and the like shuttle bay, we'll call it I guess. Uh, and the bosses, or the villains who show up in those stages, are Jaws, Baron Samity, uh, Mayday, and Ajab. And then at the very end of the shuttle base stage, you fight the Professor in this big UFO, like Dr. Wily ship. Um, and you destroy it, you plant the bomb, you leave, and then after level 4, there's like a separate little boss fight after that, where you fight Jaws when he's piloting some big ship thing. But in this game, from, from what it sounds like here, the boss fights are all like separate, kind of similar to the final boss fight in the Mega Drive game. Um, so the boss fights for level 1 and 2 are the same villain, and then for level 3, they replaced Mayday with Oddjob. And then for mission 4, there there isn't one, I guess, but there's this final mission thing instead, which I they're making it sound like it's kind of an escape sequence kind of thing. 
I'm curious, like the Mega Drive game was like fighting the villains were was generally anticlimactic or kind of unremarkable, but the final boss fight was like super cool and insane. This sounds like it's gonna be a little bit of the opposite scenario, but I'm looking forward to finding out. Uh, On-screen info. Number of hit points Bond has left. General direction Bond must travel to complete the level. That is interesting. I guess I was not quite aware that that's what that thing was. It's like a little arrow thing. Uh, starting the game. Uh, press a button to start the game. Uh, we'll enter the options page. You can change the options. Start game. This will start the game with three credits from mission 1-1. One, one. Yeah, so the Mega Drive game gives you one continue. I guess we have two in this one. Game type. We can choose easy, normal, or hard. Easy. All enemies move slower and fire less. Bond gets more hit points per life, and there are no end of missions. So what they call an end of mission is the boss fights, basically. As you can just see here, it's like mission 3, 3-1, three, 3-2, three, 3-3, three, three, and then end of mission, odd job. So the boss fights just get cut out if you're playing on easy. Normal. This is the standard game and set on power-up. Hard. All enemies move and fire quickly. Bond gets fewer hit points. And there's no end of mission bonus. <laughs> so you get less score on hard. But I think that's actually... It actually matters because I want to say that it, it mentions something about you can earn lives and credits. So I guess they make it harder to extend. Buttons. You can change the buttons around if you like. Right, we can swap the buttons, right? Uh, we can reset high scores. This will reset all high scores to the same as on power-up. This is such a bizarre feature because surely there's no battery in the cartridge. Like, why would you have a dedicated function in the menu to reset the high score table when I'm pretty sure you could just power off the console? If there's an actual, like, SRAM or battery or something in this cartridge, that's insane. <laughs> that's interesting. Um... Oh yeah, that's right. We've got fucking Amiga sound options in this game. It's either sound effects or music. There's no simultaneous uh, sound effects and music in this. High score screen. If you gain a high score at the end of the game, you will be asked to enter your name. All right. Wait, what? <laughs> uh, fill up the whole namespace by pressing button one to end. Okay, I, hopefully we'll be able to figure out how to enter our name in the high score table. Lives, credits, and hit points. Each Bond game has three credits, each credit has three lives, and each life has a number of hit points depending on which difficulty level you are playing. On easy, Bond gets four hit points per life, on normal, Bond gets three hit points, and on hard, Bond gets two. Every time Bond gets hit by an enemy or a bullet, he falls to the floor and loses a hit point. When he has lost all hit points, then he loses a whole life. When Bond has lost all lives, then you will be asked if you want to play a new credit. Like, who wrote this? This... Uh, okay, well, whatever. If Bond falls too far, falls into the sea or a lava flow, or dies on an end of mission, he will lose a whole life, regardless of how many hit points he has left. Extra lives, credits, and hit points can all be gained during the game. Alright, so that's also confusing. Okay, obviously, you take damage from stuff, and if you lose all of your HP, you die. Makes perfect sense that far. If you fall, like, if you fall too far, or if you fall into water or lava, you die instantly. Okay, that's normal. That's nothing too strange. It's good that they inform us of that. But then it says, like, if Bond dies on an end of mission, he will lose a whole life. Like, so if he dies, you lose, like, why are they making that distinction? Surely, if you die on a regular level, you will also lose a life. Are they implying that the boss fights doesn't give you hit points, so you die in one hit on boss fights? It doesn't seem like they would need to distinguish the fact that dying loses you a life on the boss fights. I'm I'm very <laughs> I'm very curious if playing the game uh, will make this make any more sense. I believe it just says here that we can get lives and credits, but it doesn't say... I skimmed this very quickly before. I don't think it says how many 
points or whatever we need to do to actually get lives or credits. Some mana mission scenarios might have one hit kills. Yeah, it, sure. Um, I think it's something, it's mentioned something about Jaws throwing us to the sharks or whatever, but that's like, just reading that description, it sounds like it's just embellishments for the sake of sounding cool. Uh, it could be a mechanic. In fact, I think in the Mega Drive game, if you walk into Jaws's range, he will like lift you up and choke you and like toss you to the ground. So maybe he has that in this game and maybe it does kill you instantly. It could be the case, but it's like, yeah, there could be traps or hazards or unique obstacles that kill you in one hit anywhere. It just seems like such a strange thing that like, oh yeah, if you fall too far, you will die instantly. If you fall into lava, you will die instantly. Uh, on these particular levels, if there's a thing that will kill you instantly, it will also kill you instantly. Look, of course it will. <laughs> it's like, if you if you cease to live, you will then die. It's like, oh, all right, cool, thank you. That's very helpful. But like I said, maybe playing the game, we can piece together what it is, the, the, the information that they tried to convey and perhaps did not succeed in doing so. But, you know, we, we appreciate the effort. Uh, and... and <laughs> Hope that we can uh, make use of this information to survive our mission. Start a new credit. When Bond loses all lives and has credits left, you will be asked if you wish to start a new credit. When asked, pressing button 1 will begin a new credit, and Bond will be put back to the start of the last mission he was on. Pressing button 2 will make the time countdown quickly. Alright, scoring. 100 points for hitting jaws, bones, or odd job. 200 points for collecting hostages. Home guns. Uh, it's like home, oh, some kind of turret, I guess. Robotic fish, droids, or sentry guns. 300 points for sailors, commandos, firemen, and scientists. Okay, so that's going to be the, lever, the, the, the regular enemies. It's very funny, though, that they describe the volcano enemies as firemen. Uh, I think the, the, they have, like, hazmat suits or something. I would not have thought... You know, because, yeah, I mean, it makes sense that they would be wearing, like, uh, like, fire retardant suits or, like, you know, protective whatever. Similar to what a fireman, you know, might wear. <laughs> but they're not, like, firemen. They're not running around to, to extinguish the volcano. Uh, well, whatever. Maybe they are. <clears throat> if you're fatally wounded, you will lose a life. Yes, that appears to be the case. And I should be careful not to get killed to death. These are all, these are all solid advice. Um, yeah, sailors, firemen, and scientists, just like these fucking salt-of-the-earth laborers minding their own business, and Bond just shows up, trigger-happy, just shooting everyone. Uh, but I'm sure they're gonna shoot first, so uh, it's fine. 500 points for final death of end-of-level baddies. The final death. The first couple of deaths apparently worth zero points but the final one is 500 restart computers q cases of all types destruction of power station on mission 22 all other scores for bonus points and small baddies are 200 points all other scores for bonus points are 200 points what bonus points like what is going to give me a 200 point bonus oh whatever all right Projection, TV warning, I think we'll be okay. Cartridge handling. I like that... <laughs> For whatever reason, there's a Mega Drive cartridge on the cartridge care page here, and not on a Master System one. Uh, yeah, printed in Australia, so I guess that makes sense. This would be the Australian manual. I'm sure the PAL manual would have uh, like six or eight languages anyway, so I guess that makes sense. But we, we were, if I recall correctly, when we read the manual for the Mega Drive game, there was an ostensibly European manual that was only in English, which I found very confusing. But maybe that was an Australian one too, and it was just labeled as European because it was from a PAL version or something. Who knows? Um, because like as a kid, um, the manuals we got were always um, like just pan-European manuals, and they would have like English, French, German, Italian, Spanish, probably like Dutch. Finnish, Swedish. Maybe that was it. Something like that. And they were always like 
they were, they were like less visually exciting than this. They were, as I recall, at least printed with black ink, but <laughs> I guess whether you consider that an improvement or not is, is highly subjective. But there we go. <clears throat> That's the manual. And I think we're about as, as prepared as we're going to be. So. <clears throat> with that. Let's see if we can uh, get the show on the road. Oh, I'm feeling a lot better. I was sick over the weekend, but I'm, I, I can tell now that I'm like talking extensively. Uh, my notes is still pretty stuffed. <laughs> I'll try my best not to make too many disgusting, sick noises right into the mic. Uh, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> so, fade away these jams. They've served us well, but have outlived their welcome. Uh, oh yeah, I did turn that on. Let's do... This, I guess, and let me change this around on my end here so I can actually doing. Oh, that's probably better. Oh, yeah, I think actually we should choose because I, I noticed this. Um, there's some like resolution weirdness going on when playing Master System games, or at least when playing this one game on my EverDrive. Oh shit, I forgot. I need to um the I need to get some uh timer action. This here, and we can. There we go. Oh yeah, I should probably actually Let me grab this link real quick, uh, and we can update the spreadsheet. Let's set the status of this mission to active. We're starting this on twenty twenty three oh seven oh five, right? The fifth of July. <clears throat> Breaking out, so let's try resetting that. That usually helps. <clears throat> so you'll see. So, yeah, we've got a couple of different versions here. One that was just labeled nothing, 1993, and then we have Brazil and Europe. Um, and then we have this version that's labeled UE. Uh, this is a, of course, a totally different game. This is the S uh, SC3000. This was actually mission number one, I think. The original game that came out on Atari 2600 and also had a Sega port. Um, we beat the Sega version, actually. Good times. Um, so let's... Let's start with the Europe version. You'll see it's going to freak out a little bit. Uh, typically would settle down. Okay, there we go. Maybe I just needed to bring out the menu. <clears throat> Wait, is this? Developed by the Kremlin. Programming by the KGB. <laughs> Today's greatest, the Kremlin present James Bond, The Duel, Andy Taylor, Warren Mills, Sawhead, Joe Myers, Paul Margrave, Russ Ferrier. So Margrave was the name of the villain in the Mega Drive game. Okay, wait. I thought this version would run slowly. I'm super confused. Well, that explains why I thought the music was fast. The whole different version stuff is quite confusing. 
looks pretty sick. Yeah, I mean, the visuals are great, right? Because they're basically the same as the Mega Drive version, and that game looked awesome, too. Um, but yeah, I noticed, like, the, the cropping here looks messed up, and that's because I don't have a preset. Um, like, if I use my Mega Drive preset, like, it's all messed up anyway, and in fact, it gets... It crops uh, some stuff. I think when the signal is, like, freaking out... Um... I don't know if it shifts different ways, because I was trying to set up a preset um, that was more, cropped more correctly, but then it, it didn't stay consistent when I, like, booted the system multiple times. It, so we're just going to do it like this. So just, like, for comparison, then... Um, let me reset. So that was the Europe version. Oh, I could swear that the Brazil one was the one that ran faster. Um, but we can try. Yeah, maybe this is the same. We'll, we'll boot up the UE version, too, and see what it says. Okay, yeah, so you can hear now. This is much slower. Oh, okay. Yeah, converted by Bizarre. But this music sounds like it's more the correct speed, right? And I guess, like, the screen looks like it's kind of weirdly cut off, but maybe the other version was the same. Developed by the Kremlin, programmed by KGB. Yeah, so this version had the bizarre credit at the beginning. Uh, where well, the other version did not. So I think these names... Paul Margrave um, was credited on the other version, but I forget if... I, I'm not sure all these other names were, like, credited or, you know for the Mega Drive version. Yeah, see, like, not only is this really slow, uh, that's, uh, the skull fist thing, by the way, that's the, the, the Kremlin's logo. Like, that's their kind of brand logo. Like, I wouldn't say, like, this is not just because we literally just saw the other version, but just looking at this in isolation, like, it looks sluggish. Um... Like, it looks weird. Like, some parts look kind of choppy, too. Because I, I booted this up, and it played like this, and I was like, this doesn't seem right, even having not seen the faster version. Um, so it is confusing, but, like... I guess what could be the case... We'll boot up the, the UE version, and I guess we'll see how that behaves. Um, it could very well be. You know, it's a British-developed game. Um, I suppose it was released in North America, but I guess you could argue that it was probably developed primarily for the PAL market. Because the US market for Master System games in 1993 must have been shockingly small. In fact, it's weird that it even would have been released considering what we were talking about before, that the Master System was kind of, you know, dead by, like, 1990. Yeah, these are the commandos in the jungle. But it, it, it's entirely plausible that the Brazilian version maybe came out later or whatever, and they had... Um, that maybe Bizarre... Like, they're, they're, whoever they are, they are credited not for porting the game to the Master System, but by creating this, like, Brazilian optimized version that slows the game down to run at the correct original intended speed. Which, you know, if you ran a PAL 50Hz game on a 60Hz console, you would expect it to run faster. So it actually, d it doesn't, like, it's not strange that we would boot up the Europe version and it runs faster. Um... But it's just, like, it's not consistent with my recollection of how it worked when I was testing this the other day. That's why I'm confused. And the thing is, too, like, I don't recall immediately off the top of my head if there is an American uh, Master System box art, like, on Sega Retro. I want to say that there was, but I could be misremembering. So even the, the idea that this was released in America uh, could be completely wrong. It could be completely made up. Um, just something written somewhere that is not actually factually correct. So it's it's entirely possible that this, or even, you know, that the, the ROM dump is named like this. 
um could have led like because that's the thing like these kinds of uh facts and information it's very common for them to like as soon as someone puts incorrect information out in the world it usually doesn't take much for it to get um uh what's the word i was gonna say perpetrated <laughs> Uh, regurgitated, not the right word either. Uh, perpetuated, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Uh, proliferated, sure, that works too. Um, you know, someone just has to put this wrong information in one spot and someone just needs to reference that in one spot and someone puts that on Wikipedia referencing that other, that's other place and then you're done. Like, it just never goes away. So this, I would assume then, is the same as the Europe... Yeah, but this is running at the slower speed. But you can kind of see when it when it's glitching out, there is a right border somewhere of that gray box. You can see it flickering into like. But I, I'm pretty sure if I um, uh, no, okay, we can get it to go on there. This is again the, the slower running version. Because this had the bizarre credit as well. Yeah, I can move the screen further to the left so we get the gray outline on the title screen, but it's like black border in game anyway. Cause yeah, like it could have been, I guess I, I can't play it on my Mega Drive, of course, but I, I should probably boot up the Game Gear version just to see how that runs and, and plays because the Game Gear obviously wouldn't have any like PAL NTSC regional weirdness going on because it's just the same worldwide. <clears throat> the only source listed on Sega Retro US version is a Game Pro Magazine page listing the the mega driver i mean that makes perfect sense too like that people get completely mixed up between the 8 and 16 bit versions yeah like the more i think of it like the less sense it makes that this would have a us release um but it's still fascinating so this is probably just mislabeled because i would much sooner believe um I would much sooner believe the ROM dump that it's labeled Europe that doesn't have the bizarre credit on it running too fast on the NTSC console. Um, and then the one that does have bizarre being slower being the Brazil one. But I'm actually not really sure. I know very little about the Brazilian um, like PAL standard. I just know it, they have their own thing and I, I'm pretty sure it's 60 Hertz. Cause it's got like its own, like I just remember if you have an actual, like a friend of mine, um, he had the Brazilian Street Fighter 2 for the Master System and I remember we were playing it. And I can't recall if he had a Brazilian Master System console or if he had some other Master System we were playing it on. But I think it, we either were playing it in black and white or it was just some there was definitely like some issue or challenge to getting color um, like sort of similar to if you're using like if you're playing on a CRT back in the day if you're playing an NTSC console it was always this thing like where you had to have an RGB video cable to get color using composite um, or S-video you would typically just get a black and white signal for whatever reason um, but it was, it's not literally the exact same issue with something similar, I guess. Uh, what's up, Itinerant Soldier? We haven't actually gotten started yet. There's been uh, plenty deep lore to, to dig into. Um, but we'll see. I think, anyway, the... Oh, yeah, the firemen right there. Oh, the geysers? Yeah, these are not in the Mega Drive version. Oh, yeah, we should reset. I think the, the faster running version is going to be more... Um... Actually, let's boot up the Domark one. 
So maybe this one, this should be the Europe version, probably if it's labeled Domark. Um, or it just doesn't work. Oh, maybe, what? Hang on. I was going to say, this is probably... Yeah, dot bin would be the Mega Drive version. But it should still boot. I have a I'm in the Master System folder, but I don't think the the flashcard makes a difference. Well, whatever. Um put up the the Europe version again. Domark group limited, yeah. Yeah, so the the, the screen where it says conversion by bazaar is just kind of like missing in this version. Well, but missing, they added it in the other version, I guess. So the music is all fucked up, but I think the game plays more smoothly. We'll start with this version. We'll see how it goes. I reckon the slower version is probably going to be easier. Um, but if we come across too much stuff that seems too fucked up in this one, we'll just play the, the slower one. But like I mentioned, and obviously uh, this could most likely just be people doing it wrong or fucking up. But like all the footage you find of this game on the internet appears to be running at this speed. Um, but there's zero reason to believe that that's... Oh, whoops, it just started. Cool. Oh, okay. No, it just went back. There's no reason to believe that anyone is doing it correctly because of that, but I found it interesting. Um, buttons. Alt. Uh, would make it more comfortable. Yeah, the reset high score. Yeah, so it defaults to the sound effects. Uh, but we can set it to music. Um, I, I bet the music's gonna be pretty good, but we can start this this way, just kind of with the default settings. I'm expecting to game over a couple of times and slash or trying the other version. And the music's probably gonna sound better in the slower version anyway. Um, of course, the Mega Drive game had music by Matt Furness, and it was great. Um, I don't know who made the, the music in this one, but I don't think Matt Furness did any Master System soundtrack. I mean, I could be super wrong about that, but he's just so prolific on the Mega Drive that I associate him very closely with it. But I don't think... Because he wasn't... I mean, I don't know, it gets confusing, but he... Because um, he worked with Chrysalis. I don't know exactly who the Kremlin were in terms of, like, specific people, but I, I take it the, the music was sort of outsourced to him for that version. I don't know if they would do that for this version. Or, I mean, if they did it, they probably wouldn't hire him. Unless he was also proficient with Master System music, but... I don't know. We, we may never know. So I'm not sure. Oh, the game doesn't have credits, but maybe one of the names in the high score is a musician. You could probably piece it together, but... Matt Furness's name didn't show up there, at least. Uh, well, let's start the timer and uh, see how it goes. Mission status, Commander James Bond. All right, this is going to be seem super fast now, but yeah, he still has like the like very slow turnaround animation. Yeah, so those fish are ostensibly robots. So we have four hit points on normal. But we just start with, with two of them. Bond moves like super differently compared to the Mega Drive version. I'm just expecting enemies to show up. Like the jumping, the air control, like he moves like a platform game character in this one much more so. He still like turns around and, and does certain things like quite slowly. Computer. Nice. Snap the fish. He's a lot more nimble in this one. Whoa! Okay. And everything except turning around. But you can turn around instantly in, in midair. <laughs> There's also no altering of the height of the jump. I guess the sailor got despawned. Oh, there he is. All those points.
So those little sniper dudes are unique to this version as well, by the way. Yeah, you kind of fall over like that when you take damage in the other version too, but it's a little different. Well, everything is a little different. Like the, the actual the art assets, the tile set, the boat, bond, the enemies. That's all the same. It's just like looping around. No, it's probably just similar. By the way, everything behaves and moves different. I will say also Bond, I don't know how clearly this comes across on stream, but in the Mega Drive version, the sprite kind of red like it was solid black. Here the blue sort of highlights are quite visible. The sprite like almost kind of comes across as more detailed in this version. All right, sick. Now this is some Master System music, all right. <laughs> Crazy climber falling box scare pretty much. Ah, <laughs> oh, the the like continuity, we're continuing up the ladder. Kremlin posters. All right, even though the, the gun animation is like quite slow. Oh, I see the little arrow pointing to the left. If there's anything. Oh, okay, no, we're just Did I just fucking despawn my bullet by crouching or something? I'm not sure what happened. Can you hide? No. I guess there's no upwards shooting. No. You also don't have limited ammo in this one, like in the Mega Drive game. Is there a hostage behind that door, maybe? Kind of looked like the screenshot. There is. Oh, dude, this fight's different, too. That's sick. <laughs> awesome. Okay, we got extra points for that. Oh, that's a wall. Okay. That's the wall, brother. Right. You don't have to like hold the button to slide. You just tap the jump button and down. And it just slides until you press up. What's up, Lamasar? Uh, game's pretty cool. Whee! Like, he's so fast. Like, it just, I don't know. I, I ended up really liking the Mega Drive game. I mean, I had it as a kid, but I remembered it being really hard. Playing through it, like, it was... I mean, we finished it in one stream. Ah, uh, well, okay. No, we're, we're... I see. Okay, so we had three hits, because now our bar is empty, but we're alive. But the next touch will kill us. So we did not actually get health back between stages. Or between, you know... 1-1 one, one and 1-2. One, Oh boy. The fact you can like shoot like that and they don't instantly shoot, it's it's quite nice. The enemies generally seem a little easier to deal with in this version. I kind of like the level design. Quite different. It's pretty intense, though. <laughs> I'm a little unsure what the purpose of these crates being smashed against the deck of the ship is, you know, supposed to be, but... All right. So the hostages appear to be, like, entirely optional score items. Oh, okay, one of those... never mind, I was gonna say it must have been health. I was like, wait, hang on. I'm pretty sure those health indicators are empty. <laughs> Forget what color anything was, but... Crouching down to be safe, but... Can I stand on that? Uh, I don't know. The general direction arrow is pointing to the left, so... Dude, this animation is unique. That's not in the other version. He can, you can, like... You can shimmy like that in the Mega Drive game. 
but it looks different. This animation I don't think is in that game. Oh, look at all those Q crates, or <laughs> crates, Q, uh, Q cases. Oh, I'm, I'm going to keep holding down because I'm expecting the camera to scroll. Can't do that. I don't want to just drop down blind because false can apparently kill you. Yeah, I figured there'd be enemies here. General direction, but... Nice! Okay. This game is pretty cool. It's still got some of that tense... Like, I mean, especially, I guess, going, going through the stage with no HP, but... James. I mean, the Mega Drive game to me is like my favorite Bond game so far. Live and let, or not live and let die, but um, The Spy Who Loved Me and um, License to Kill are kind of the uh... nice. The other candidates, maybe. Oh, dude, this is rough. New life. Okay. Oh yeah, we have grenades and missiles. Alright, this is a little scary because I have to press the button on the cartridge itself. How it works. Uh, in case you're not aware, the, the Master System, of course, has the pause button on the console. Um, and the Mega Drive is backwards compatible with Master System games, but Master System cartridges don't fit in the cartridge slot. So that's why Sega released um, what was called the Power Base Converter in the West, at least. I don't know if no if had a name in Japan. Um, but it's a big honking thing that you, it looks kind of, you know, like a, a Game Genie or a 32X or that kind of thing. You, you slot it into the cartridge slot of the Mega Drive and you can then plug in Master System cartridges or Master System My Cards, uh, which are basically similar to the PC Engine Hue cards. Um, some of the simpler games were released on the card format. And that device has a pause button on it because um, like you can use a Mega Drive controller on a Master System console too. They use the same uh, port. And if you use a Mega Drive controller on a Master System, you use the B button and C button as button one and two. But like just the way the hardware communicates, like there's no way for the console to bind the start button on the controller or anything else to the pause function on the Master System. So you'd use the pause button on the power base converter. And I'm playing a uh, on a flash cart on the EverDrive and kind of the same thing. Software wise, I can play SG-1000 game and I, games and I can play Master System games like we're doing right now. Um, but to actually pause, there still needs to be a pause button. So the EverDrive cartridge has a pause button on it specifically for playing Master System games. But it's a kind of a clicky little firm button uh, it's not that you have to press it super hard, but you know, you have to really press it. And I'm always a little worried about, you know, the cartridge, it's not, you know, it could wobble a little bit. So I've not actually, at least when I was trying this game, had the experience of trying to press the pause button and the game crashing because of the cartridge connection or anything, but it seems very plausible that it could happen. Called well, the mega adapter in Japan. Thank you. That sounds about right. So I can I can swap between our our sub weapons here, but so far I don't see how they would help us really. Um, but we can try. Oh yeah, that's the missile right there, like a bullet with a smoke trail. Actually, I should probably use rapid fire. That might, you know what? That might help here. So does that just, because pressing both doesn't do anything. Oh, whoops. Uh, that's a, that, that's an EverDrive thing. <laughs> um, if I press hold, if I hold both buttons and tap down, I go to the system menu for Master System games. Dude, that idle animation, that's not in the Mega Drive one. Dude, that's sick. This sprite is so awesome. Um, yeah, okay, so I can't fucking crouch into... Oh, all right, so I can... Um, 
But I can also just mash the fire button and it does the exact same thing anyway. Uh, you can disable that uh, menu. So is this possibly the better version? Uh, it's entirely possible. <laughs> Killing the fish, like, kills the slowdown. I think both are good. But I, I always kind of knew, like, that's the thing. My recollection... Alright, I just shot a... Cube suitcase. I remember thinking the Mega Drive game was, like, pretty cool, but it was really hard, and I'm like, nah, I don't know that I really like it that much. But then it turned out that, like, I had severely overestimated how difficult it was. And kind of underestimated how sick a lot of it is. Alright, this is a little bit fucked, but... Okay. I don't think... I, I didn't think it touched me, but... I wonder if the fish is affecting my, like, amount of bullets I can have on screen. Is it jumping different heights? I'm not sure. Alright, let me try something. Does this... No, I was still set to rapid fire, okay. I was, like, curious if the, the option somehow affected the amount of bullets I could have on screen, but... So I kind of need to take care of these fish, or otherwise uh, these guys are going to give me a lot more trouble. But yeah, so like, in the time when I was kind of like looking forward to playing these games, I had seen like two minutes maybe of this game. I don't think you can turn around like this in the Mega Drive version. I remember that being kind of awkward. Um, I I was surprised seeing this and like expecting it to just be kind of a less oh rolling barrels the manual did warn us. I was you know thinking it would be just a lesser worse version. I was like no you know this actually looks pretty cool. Um, and then I play the Mega Drive one. It's like you know what this actually is sick. Can I get up there? I think so. And then, you know, I realized how cool that version was. And it's like, you know, maybe... Maybe the Master's version... Yeah, it might be decent, but I don't know if it's going to be all that. And then when I booted up and I got the kind of slow playing version, I was like, oh, I don't know about this. This seems weird. I remember this being cool. And then we're playing it at faster speeds, and it definitely is cool. But I think it's entirely plausible that we are going to have two... Distinctly different, but both pretty sick Sega Bond games. The manual does say... Thought he might shoot me there. Panicked. Expecting barrels. <laughs> um, the manual claims that that it is possible to gain health and lives and credits during gameplay. But I have no idea how. We might as well try to get some points where we can. All right, boss time, we're gonna fight Jaws. I think we're getting pretty high up on the high score table already. I want to say the top score was 50k. 007, locate and terminate enemy of the free world. Jaws. Extra mission. Holy shit! Unique Jaws sprite. I started mashing, sorry. You do die in one hit. Okay, the boss fights are, like, way sicker in this version. But they might also be... fucking really hard. The Jaws fight is, like, awesome in both games, but... 
Fuck. Yeah, they, it actually lives up to to the manual's lofty promises, which is more than I expected. Is he gonna go up here? No. Maybe I'm relatively safe up here? I don't know. Ah. Clearly not, but I could probably He'll probably stay up here until it seems like he's gonna I don't know if he has like a I'm like trying to jump into the corner like not stand on the platform to kind of trick him into not thinking I'm on the platform it seems like it's maybe working yeah I do have grenades and missiles I'm a little scared to try and swap weapons Shit, okay. I'll try it this time. I think I have one more continue. Yeah, the boss fight having like the instant kills is pretty pretty rough. Oh, okay. So I wonder if no. I guess you don't get a pause menu on the boss fight. thought it would land on the other platform like being up here it's like the easiest to see if he's coming my way what the hell what was that jump I just got like blocked in midair okay that was a weird death well, I guess we don't need to worry too much about figuring out weapon strats on bosses, because it doesn't seem like you can even use the sub-weapons. <clears throat> I might try to swap... Well, I'm probably not going to bother swapping to the rapid fire... Um, ...next try. So if I'm just on missile... Oh, it's 500,000. Okay, that makes sense. I was like, hmm, we didn't get to enter our name. Oh wait, we were definitely above 40,000. Why did I not get to enter my... Maybe... Maybe because I continued and it reset our score or something? Ah, whatever. Um, if I keep the missiles equipped throughout the mission... I wonder if maybe it's going to keep the missiles equipped during the boss fight and you can actually use them. I wouldn't expect it, but it's not impossible. Yeah, continuing resetting score is not unusual, but I guess in most cases you would still be allowed to enter the, the actual free game over score. Um, no such luck here. We've been going for about two hours, so I think it's high time for me to take a short break. I need to go to the bathroom anyway, so I'll step aside for a few moments. And um, when I return, we will continue with some more the duel. See you guys in a little bit.
All right, I return. Opponent working on the elevator action returns speedrun world record. I saw the comments like, that was a weird comment. I was like, oh yeah, we had the music from the game just playing. <laughs> Not that random. Well, I hope that goes well for you. I wish you the best in your speedrunning endeavors. It's a pretty sick game. It's an incredibly sick game, one might say. One of the top walk-and-shoot games of all time. Alright, so let's, let's try this again. I reckon uh, learning the levels might be pretty straightforward. Um... There weren't that many, like, tricky parts. I mean, you can just take straight hits here and there, and the fact that health doesn't refill between stages means that you gotta, like, you gotta be on your toes. Um, it's an interesting kind of challenge. And uh, the thing is, like, we don't really... Well, easy might be good, actually, for practicing stages, if you want to do that, but obviously skipping the boss fights means the easy mode is, like, not gonna really be an option for a complete playthrough. Uh, and I'm not saying that for, like, a, a challenge point of view, like, I need to prove something by playing on a high enough difficulty level. It's just that the boss fights seem like they're gonna be fucking sick. So, I'd hate to miss out on them. But yeah, it, I have no idea what to expect of, uh, boss health and whatnot. So I have no idea how close we were to beating Jaws. <clears throat> um... Let's try playing with music and see how that affects our experience. <clears throat> the music's pretty good, unsurprisingly. Maybe I should try to get these fish. Pretty sure you can't get the snipers because you cannot, um... Uh, in this version, you cannot fire your gun while jumping like you can in the Mega Drive one. I feel like playing with music is, a unfortunately, a rather severe handicap. Because these enemies might, like... Or at least the turrets might make some noise when they're shooting, right? So... Might be at a disadvantage for that reason. Dude, that was a lucky stop. I feel like if I kept climbing there, I could easily have gotten hit by that falling crate. Making minor adjustments. Dodge those crates is iffy because, again, the. Um, like, you can move forward very snappily and quickly, but turning around takes a hot minute. And even though you can technically turn around instantly while jumping, there's no minimum. Oh. I mean, the exact opposite. There is a minimum jump height. That you cannot go under, or rather, you cannot control the height of your jump at all. But you end up, like... Okay, technically you can actually control the height a little bit. But, um... It's pretty dangerous, especially with the snipers, because you would jump up towards them. All right, that's that's uh, no hit stage one. How often was that an issue with Amiga or ST games, where playing music means you don't get the sound effects? I would say it's common uh, to have the option of one or the other. Um, or 
to put it in a more accurate way, I would say it's extremely common to only have one or the other. Whether you actually get an option, um, not as common. I would say it's, it's very common to just have a game that has like music in the opening and during gameplay there's no music. Um, like I wouldn't say it's quite standard to have the actual option between them, but there's more than a few games that do have that, of course. So again, the hostages here to be an optional score thing. So the hostages in the Mega Drive version are uh, blonde and they have blue dresses. I think the sprites are like similar. They're in a similar pose, but I don't think the sprites are the same. Like Bond looks like it's mostly the exact same sprite, but it might actually be a little bit different. Um, there's like some animations that don't seem to be the same. Um, the proportions just seem slightly different, but it could just be because the screen resolution is like ever so slightly different that things just look a little different. I'm not sure. But like the jumping looks the same. Climbing looks the same. Um, but the... <clears throat> climbing the rope, like the, the horizontal rope, uh, did not look the same. So, interesting. And Jaws had a different sprite, you know. These guys look mostly the same, but I, I'm now I'm like super curious to actually compare everything side by side. Fuck. Okay. I didn't want to stop till I knew I was like clear from the crate, but it was fine. Ah! I didn't see where the bullet was, but I stood up in it. I was too impatient. That sucks. And again, as long as we survive to the boss fight, it doesn't really make a difference how much health we have left. Oh, my screen blacked out for some reason there. So weird that you can shoot the Q cases. Okay, um, shit. I want to pause, but I don't want to actually, I guess I can do this. Sometimes this helps. Um, well, that doesn't look like it helped. I, the, the signal was like blacking out on my screen. Um, I was trying to avoid that. <clears throat> oh yeah, I used a missile there. I didn't mean to, but that's fine. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's just faster to take this route. Alright, so we got the uh, treacherous piranha platform. Sorry, the robot fish, I guess. Alright, that's one, two. So we, ha we were up at what? 50,000 last time and that did not appear to give us a one-up or a continue assuming that's like based on score I forget if I mentioned it but the music sounds good like this music to me doesn't sound like it's running too fast like I'm sure it may very well be And of course, having heard it like this, it's going to feel really weird and slow if we listen to it in the other version. But like the the other music we heard, like the Bond theme, just like absolutely sounded like it was going too fast. All right, you are still getting the points, so I guess we might as well.
Luckily, that jump isn't as hard as it seems like it could be. Like, jumping off or on to moving platforms is certainly something that can be pretty awkward in games. Right, the barrels are a real threat. Ooh, you can shoot them. Okay. That's awesome. Because I kept getting tripped up by the barrels uh, when I was expecting barrels and dudes showed up instead. But knowing that I can crouch shoot to deal with both barrels and dudes or sailors, whatever, uh, is actually quite helpful. Of course, I get- whoa! <laughs> I thought it would land higher up on the pile. That works. So, the manual- oh, maybe there are refills for the different weapon types. I was gonna say, the manual mentions something about, like, different types of Q-cases, and clearly they have, like, some kind of color coding. But I've not necessarily noticed any of them giving me anything other than 500 points. Um, but I suppose if they gave me sub-weapon ammo... I, that's not something I would see. Alright, we only took one hit, so we survived with zero deaths. Jaws. I wonder if we get different music. Ugh. I'm nervous, though, because I don't know that we got any closer to figuring out any kind of strats. Uh, I didn't change my weapon, so we can try and see if we can fire missiles. Enemy of the free world, Jaws. Dude, he just jumps right off the bat. Dude, my jumping is... Alright, you don't jump normally on this stage. Oh, fuck. Like, physics are totally different. I it, like I I, it, it, I didn't realize it before because I didn't do as much jumping. Fuck. But you don't yeah you like you just don't jump as high. So he cannot drop through the floor, which means if he's above me and I'm closer to the wall, I'm basically safe. That's basically the solution. Uh, different music, by the way. Nice, we got him. Okay, we figured out Jaws. That was a that was a better boss fight than anything in the other game. Extra bonus. Oh, okay, so that's how you get shit. Okay, I have to press a button here, I guess. Oh, okay. Of course, it's gonna fucking slow down. Extremely slow. Okay, hundred points. Wow, thanks. Okay, but that seems we like we figured it out. That's. Not only learnable, but it's learned. Okay, so it's just the stage music and boss music, I guess. Okay, Robot Snake. Oh, shit! Okay. Ah! I fell too high. I was too scared to land on the platform. But that's okay. You walk villas. We're in the jungle, apparently. Yeah, John's like, I, I could tell it kind of right away that, like, he'll grab you instantly, but the sprites sort of need to overlap in a certain way. So the trees here, like, the, the, the basic setting is the same as the Mega Drive game. 
Um, but the tile set's pretty different. Like, the branches... These kind of branches don't exist. At least not that you can, like, climb on like this, really. So they're kind of acting like the staircases. They're basically slopes. Oh, these are the breakable branches, I'm sure. Yeah. Camera. Okay. It's funny that the, the, the jumping through platforms like that is quite generous. Because it's kind of the exact opposite in the Mega Drive version where you have like a good amount of clearance. Where it looks like you would be able to jump up, but you still won't land on it. So the platforming is more like what you would expect from a platforming game in this one. I'm super not clear on whether enemies can um, harm you by touching you. And with health being such a commodity in this version, I'm like a little scared to try, but no, I guess they do not hurt you. Okay. Yeah, as far as all the descriptions of the, like, hostages and whatever else, definitely have the impression that it's... Fuck. Okay. Okay, so the snakes are basically reskinned snipers, I see. Uh, I definitely have the impression that um, anything beyond reaching the goal is purely optional. I kind of like that the, the stages are basically linear. But there's like slightly different routes you can take. It's kind of cool too that like you have this general travel direction for a stage. So you end up with stuff like this with this like fully vertical level. Pretty cool. I'm not prepared to say that this is the better version. I think both of them actually, so far at least, have... Um... Oh, that's a turret, okay. They both have, like, a unique appeal. Perfect. <laughs> Perfectly lined up to not hit him. Um, like, each of them both have cool shit that's not in the other version. Um... Like, yeah, not having boss fights in the Mega Drive version... Is a bummer, especially seeing how cool they, well, it so far is in this one. Dude, I touched the snake and got hurt and fell into oblivion and he spawned in midair. Okay, the snakes apparently harm you by touching. Okay. Oh, the computer's a checkpoint. We're learning. Sucks. Well, okay, we'll just avoid them. I guess, yeah, you jump higher when you do the somersault, because I guess he, like, tucks his legs in. Fuck! Oof. Okay, we saved ourselves. Yeah, the air control, like, you have so much more air control in this version. Okay, I hope we can respawn that platform, else this might get a little tricky. Oh, there we are. So, I guess I have to go down. I guess that's the idea. Oh, I can't slide. Oh. Sorry, I panicked. I didn't see that turret until... Okay, that panic pause was not a, such a bad thing. The sprite limit... <laughs> kind of wreaks havoc on the game at times. <laughs> when, like, enemies and projectiles are just invisible. <laughs> seems like very learnable and not particularly uh you know the game's not really being a huge dick um 
Oh, not a going up level, but I guess there might be something here. Or maybe I need to go up here to... Okay. Enemy strat basically seems to work the same here. I get so scared because it doesn't look like you'll be able to crouch under... their shots. And in, in the Mega Drive game... There are, on the third stage, the, the firemen, as they're called in the manual here. Um, you can, in fact, not crouch their shots. But you have to preemptively shoot them. I wonder if that's true in this version, actually. <sighs> that was badly timed. Or rather, I was aiming the wrong direction. Oh! That was me being dumb and not accounting for having to turn around. advance that way, but let's get these cases first. The game's slowing through a crawl because there's t uh, three two cases on screen. Quite funny. Can I? Oh, I can. Nice. I wonder if it like was even capable of hitting me there. Or if I somehow masterfully crouched it despite standing upright. Oh, I cannot do that thing. Hostages up here or something. Oh wait! Hang oh, that's the that's the thing I have to destroy. Look at that animation. Turrets luckily can only aim in eight directions or less. Oh, look at all that points! Big fucking puntos, dude. It's just okay. I'm assuming it's not continually giving me 500 for each of those, or maybe it was. Screen lock. Oh. Oh, shit! I saw the turret that was right below me in the corner of my eye, but I thought it was a suitcase. <laughs> I just saw a blue thing with a red thing on it, and it's like, oh, it's a suitcase down there, too. I was getting a little more intense with the turrets and everything. Not too bad. <laughs> What's that little rope stump up there? Maybe you can grab... Well... Try that. Nope, you cannot grab it. Okay. <laughs> okay, you need to have like a certain amount of clearance. Okay, I guess this is just window dressing. The exit's down there. Oh yeah, because we gotta go inside the cave or whatever. Is this the third one? Or do we have to fight bones now? I was gonna say, why is our score so low? It's like, oh yeah, we continued. No, okay, we're on 2-3. This game is pretty sick. <laughs> I mean, I'm not like super surprised, but it's, I'm, I'm just happy. Ah, oh, for the stage we go down. It's so cool! Just like, a simple thing like that, like, having a general travel direction for each stage that's different. Like, it's a very simple way of... Oh yeah, it's in the perfect height to not be shootable. Uh, like, it makes each stage a little distinct. Alright, I see you, Snake. Could have done this. Oh, I cannot actually shoot it. Okay. I don't really dare drop down there, though, so... Come on! I didn't... Did not touch the snake. 
very possible that I can drop down somewhere, but I don't want to do it blind because it could very likely kill us. A little scary, but didn't even see that snake. Very like claustrophobic level here. Snake there. Up that. Actually doing combat off of a ladder or a rope in this case, or vine. Like in the Mega Drive version, you can also fire your gun from a ladder position. Um, but I don't think you ever, like, actually have to do it, or even really get to do it. But it's exactly once in this one so far, but... That's enough to justify the mechanic. Oops. Extreme accidental bond stunts right there. Alright, well, no need to climb up there just to endanger ourselves. This is tense, but it's pretty s oh boy. So there's no way to like just let go and drop straight down. In fact you cannot even slide on these ropes. But you can let go sideways and then, like, immediately double back. Jumps. Pretty satisfying to make. Camera's pretty good, too, like, in terms of the horizontal scrolling. Doesn't... Ah, oh, shit. Okay, we're alive. It doesn't push us to the edge of the screen in a really awkward way or anything. Might be the end. Nope, not yet. Ah, shit. I was really, really hoping we would get to the end. The stage has been pretty long, but I guess all the stages feel a fair bit longer the first time. Ah, oh, so we have to start it all over too. Ah, oh, it sucks. We just felt from the length of the stage that we were probably pretty close to the boss, or you know, at the end of this stage. And once you get to the boss, of course, like the hit points no longer matter. You know what? Hmm. I'm thinking turning around when crouched is like maybe it's a little bit faster than doing it standing up, but I'm not sure. So there was a computer on the left here at some point, but I'm pretty sure it was visible. I don't have to do like some crazy blind jump to get to it. Ideally, we shouldn't need it, obviously, but. Not really something to be trusted. Is this a weird dead end? No. And the level design is pretty intricate. And it's getting a lot more intricate here than in the first mission. But it's cool too, like the... The Mega Drive game is kind of more about the hostage rescue. I mean, it's not... I was impressed playing that game at the level of restraint being shown. 
It's not like giant maze levels, and it's not like rescuing 50 hostages on a strict timer or anything. It's like all pretty linear and everything, but it's still... This is just like pure linear action gauntlet. Which is a little bit different. The, um... I avoided it. Okay, so basically don't even want to go here. Hmm. Oh. Okay, yeah, we were pretty close to the end. 21 minute speedrun of this game. I forget what the speedrun, the Mega Drive one was, but I think it was something similar, if not shorter. Man, we were literally like two drops away here. Well, at least we get to see and maybe practice a little bit against Baron 70 here. <clears throat> AKA Bones. It would be sick if you got unique music. I don't remember what the Jaws boss fight sounded like. So I guess I won't know if it's new or not. Oh, dude. Oh, look at that knife. Dude, okay, I got a very small little jump here. Oh my god, I can't jump back up. Okay. But it seems maybe a little more straightforward, I guess. Like, he's gonna spawn... So I probably need to shoot him first and then jump. Yep. Oh, huh. okay. Or stand on the tombstone or something? He can hurt you by touching him. Okay. That's so... Like, I don't understand why the physics are, like, totally different. We can get two hits if we have enough time to stop and shoot. Oh, I try to turn and then shoot and then I mash too hard. <laughs> oh, do we have one more credit? I don't think we do. We might? Ah, oh, we probably don't. <laughs> Wait, 14? How, how, did... how did we qualify... On this score. I guess that makes sense. The final high score just happened to be enough. I see. I see how that works out. All right. The music's cool, but I think we're gonna drop it back down to sound effects to see if we can uh, See if that helps us any. Just dive right back into it. I, I'm feeling good about Jaws at least. And I feel like um, Bones should not really pose a problem either. Alright, so there are ladders during which we are going to be susceptible to falling crates. That's a death. No, oh, okay. Gunshot wound. <laughs> Neutralize the fall damage. I see how that works. That was an extremely sloppy hit I took there. I'm shooting there because I think enemies can actually respawn. But I still think we're probably going to... Um, 
be able to clear this stage without dying. I, I just stopped for the sake of the enemy. Turns out I dodged a crate. If I die on this stage, I'm resetting. There. I was going to say, there's definitely a crate up there, so... The very good thing these turrets are limited in their aiming directions, or else this might be pretty rough. More... stunts. Yeah, there's, like, you can survive a decent drop. But the problem is you can't really see... Like, if you don't know the levels, then... You know, it's it might be a little bit too much of a risk. But I'm sure there's a lot of shortcuts you can take. Okay. So if all goes well... And we make it to Jaws on our first life. With our newfound strats. That should give us a pretty good shot at getting to mission two uh, with no deaths. It would be nice if these gave me health, like in the Mega Drive version, but here we are. Alright, make sure you're pointed left. Well, there's another difference here too, by the way. So in the Mega Drive version, you can also aim and shoot from ladders like this, but when you're stopped, you always just, like, um, he's not aiming left or right, he's merely... There's basically no unique, like, idle pose. There's no enemy on this, um platform before. Dude, I was holding down. Oh, fucking cheap. He can shoot through the door, but I can't. Alright, I'm, uh... I guess I can't easily reset, so we're just gonna do this. That's, like, really bad. I mean, I probably could have moved away. But that's really bad luck to have that dude spawn there. I guess I should have just ignored it, because you don't need to go up there anyway. Um, but, oh well. Because <laughs> I was thinking about that every time previously, that like, oh, it's a, it's a good thing that there's no enemy by this uh, hostage door, because it's such a narrow platform that you wouldn't be able to go up there and take care of the enemy easily. And, well, exactly what happened. take this route. I don't know if this is a good time to like start exploring alternate routes here. But oh well. But yeah, like in the Mega Drive version, you are always technically facing left or right when you're on a ladder. You just cannot visibly tell. So I appreciate that in this version, whenever you stop, he immediately starts pointing the gun to show you which way you're actually facing. Great. Running and jumping is really satisfying. Ah, uh, I could have just... <sighs> There's no need to, like, hesitate like that. I'm getting too overconfident and sloppy, I think. I didn't fucking even see that crate. That's my fault. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that's too high of a drop. Because this goes to... Oh, I may, probably not, actually. Oh, okay. But you would drop down on top of this gap, so... That would, in fact, not be very helpful. 
<laughs> you have to be... You don't have to climb the ladder, but you need to be, like, touching the ladder horizontally to hit the exit. Like, collision box. It's funny. I thought it was just, like, you needed to go a certain height, so I tried us jumping, and it didn't exit the level. But if, if I was jumping, like, two pixels to the right, <laughs> hit the exit trigger. Okay, so now I have to do the rest of this without being touched. Um... Yeah, so here I can at least, like, get room to crouch. So I would have been safe. Oh, okay. I didn't really need to do that. Could have just dropped down and shot him, but... Uh, okay. These dudes definitely have more animation in the Mega Drive version for the run cycle. But otherwise, they look pretty much the same. I mean, the graphics overall are really terrific in this. I mean, granted, the Master System in general good with color and everything, but I think... You could very easily confuse this for a 16-bit game. Like, the only thing that really gives it away is, like, that it's a little bit barren. Like, not in a... I don't mean that in a judgmental way. Um, like, they make great use of the tiles and everything to create a nicely varied look. <clears throat> but there's just, like, not a lot of stuff. Because anytime there's, like, more than two objects, you get massive flickering. Like, you, I just mean, basically, if this was a Mega Drive game, you would expect there to be a little bit more stuff happening. But from a purely visual standpoint, like, it's really impressive. I mean, it's not like it needs more stuff going on. It's still enough to be threatening and not terrible looking or anything. But just in terms of, like, the, the actual distinction. <clears throat> Subspace hoppercopter. I probably should hydrate. A little spooky here because I can't really say or uh, pause. I can, but because I have to press the physical pause button on the cartridge, it is uh, not devoid of risk. <laughs> so it's interesting to know that dropping down like this is actually like there's a little bit of a delay to it, but like he actually that first frame of animation kicks in instantly. Uh, unlike when you crouch, when there's a little bit more of a delay. I can't really see it, but I can feel it in controls. But when he's in that first crouching frame of dropping down the ladder, he's actually still fully vulnerable, because I got shot trying to do that before. Um, so dropping down the ladder to dodge, like, avoid being shot, is not really... like, doesn't really work, basically. Yeah, I mean, I, the Mega Drive game, too, I, I felt, um, like, going back to the speedrunning thing, it felt like a very speedrunnable game, and, and so does this. Like, the fact that you move so, so swiftly, and I think this even more so, and this is probably an, an easier speedrun, or at least, like, I mean, I don't know about, like, world record pace or anything, but in terms of, like, learning to complete this game quickly... Uh, like, if you learn the levels, you can probably learn, like, it, I reckon it's pretty deterministic about, like, timing for specific enemies and what have you. Okay, sure, let's just do that. Oh, I thought we might have barrels, but that's fine. Uh, because Bond is, like, not only is he a little bit more agile in this version, he has a little less 
inertia. Um, the enemies, I would say, are also a little less dangerous in this. Um, like, they don't shoot as quickly. They don't really run as quickly either. Um, like in the Mega Drive version, it's kind of similar. They just run on to the screen and then they stop to shoot. But they move more quickly and they will kind of stop to shoot more quickly. And you probably run faster in that game too. Like Bond is really fast. He just has like clunky sort of inertia and startup to everything. Um, but the bullets travel way faster too. Is like a real concern. Yeah, in that version. So in general, like, I think it's... I'm sure that's, like, fully learnable and everything, too. <clears throat> but it would be a little harder, I think. But I think another... That was scary. Big difference is that uh, the Mega Drive version is, like, in a lot of ways more forgiving uh, because there are like health pickups <laughs> uh, you have five hit points I think by default or I think you can have up to five but you start with three or four something like that but anytime you rescue a hostage you gain one bit of health back and um, the bosses drop like full health pickups and whatever okay we did it Hmm, pretty sure we didn't take a death, and we made it to Jaws. Let's see if I remember the strat. <laughs> like, once I kind of got into it, it was... ...easy enough, but I'm not sure about... Okay. Ah! I jumped up. A moment too soon. Shit. That sucks. Dude, he fucking tricked me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he went to the right instead of to the left. I needed to... Um, I was trying to be proactive, but I needed to be a little more reactive. Weird, like sometimes he has like a solid little iframe window. Bullets just seem to go through him for a bit after getting hit. Could be dead pretty soon. I would hope. I'm not sure this fight is... Elevated by the sound effects. I'm trying to think maybe music is the way to go. Um. Oh, this is gonna be bad. Oh! Two health? So does this mean we start with two more than we would have otherwise? I'm not sure how that works, because it's not like I had health. My health bar is empty now? Did I get lives? I have three lives, so I think we got two extra lives. That's pretty sick. I thought those were health refills because they look like the health meter. Um, but we are in fact still on zero health as we were when we entered the boss fight. That's like a little bit fucked up, I feel like. Like we take, we could take deaths on Jaws, but even those deaths don't actually replenish our health bar. <laughs> so 
So that means... Wow, okay. That's like even less forgiving than I expected. It essentially means that any stray hit you take will be punished, you know? Pretty rough, but at the same time, you know... Still made it here. Fucked up. It's... I don't know, I feel like it's... It's rough, but it's also kind of cool. It, it, it does so in a similar way, but it, it ultimately... Gives a similar tense experience like the Mega Drive game where... It's not tremendously difficult to learn everything you need to do, but you still gotta stay focused and execute, or else things can fall apart pretty quickly. Uh, like I said, you kind of get a little bit of a reprieve more frequently in that version just on account of getting health refills. But the difficulty is just sort of balanced in a slightly different way between the two. Ah, oh, I lost control. I mean, I was already dead at that point. I was, I was holding left, but you saw him stop moving. I, I guess at that point I'd fallen far enough to trigger the death state. Well, at least we got our um, hit points back <laughs> and we didn't really lose progress per se because we just got a checkpoint obviously taking a death is bad but yeah it's really interesting how the the fact that you don't get health refills like ever basically um means that you... Oh, shit. You really gotta be on your toes and stay on your toes. Because there's no, like... No freebies. Like, I can't really think of... another game that, that works like that, at least in this vein. I feel like in this type of game... Kind of expect to get. Shit. I was scared to stay on the platform because the, of the turret to my left, but in a game like this, you you expect to, you know, at the very least, uh, like after clearing a boss and getting to the full next mission, that you would get a health bar refill, but. No such luck. But now I'm like even more confused though, because the life bar has like two empty slots. And the things that looked like they would be like refills of those slots were in fact not, because they were one-ups. It kind of begs the question of how if at all, do you ever fill up those slots? Because uh, the number of hit points will change based on difficulty level, right? So you have three hits on normal, two on hard, and four on easy. But there's like two dudes filled in and two empty ones on the meter right now. And that's because the when you have zero, like you can still take a hit. Or, well, I mean, you will die, but you can take two hits and still survive. So that means that on normal, or on easy, presumably... There's three blue guys instead of two. So that final slot is just like never filled in, I guess. <sighs> Slow ass turn. The slow turning is like <clears throat> the biggest threat. But at the same time, like, unlike the Mega Drive version, I think it's easier to sort of mitigate it because you have, like, jumping is much faster. The Mega Drive version, like, 
just a ton of weird sort of gravity and inertia to the jump. You cannot jump instantly like that in that version. Like almost invisible. All right, I gotta stay on the lookout for turrets disguised as suitcases here. <laughs> really like the level design in this. I think I would say the level design is superior in this over the Bond, or uh, the Bond version, the Mega Drive version. But they go for kind of different things. <sighs> Pushing too hard. Really stupid. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm right here now. All right. Do this. Thank you for the slowdown here. Another turret up there. Ooh, I forgot that that one was there. I should have fucking crouched. I'm an idiot. This is getting tense because I'm... I'm slopping it up. But uh, I'm using my first credit here. Again, fucking at the end of the stage, though. It sucks. Like, that must have been right at the end, right? Because the exit is, like, literally right after you destroy that thing. Oh yeah, I guess I can do this. Oh, I guess that was pretty pointless, but... Oh, this is a bit awkward. Oh! Dude, the amount of slop is just... Not acceptable. Maybe it's the lack of music. <laughs> I'm not fully in the groove. I wonder if we can jump across there or something. We can jump pretty far. Probably not that far. But pretty well camouflaged if you're not looking out for that thing. Just, you know, fair enough. There's some kind of a security measure after all jumping just feels so good dude it was well behind my head bond's hurt box is just A little too big. Might hit. I don't think I'm hitting it. No, oh, I guess. I guess I was. Hmm. I guess. I'm not sure, but it seems like maybe. You can actually cancel your gunshot animation with a jump. Mm. Not exactly, but you can buffer the jump. If I start shooting and then immediately hold the jump button, he will jump. Yeah, I don't I need to hold it, but if I hold it, he will actually jump on the first possible frame. That is uh, pretty dang good to know. I wonder if there's a... probably not. I can say, uh... Computer down there, but the exit is like... Oh, well, there might have been, actually. You know what? Why don't we investigate? There is.
And there was one up there. Well, good thing I got the other one. Yes. So there's like a screen, like a scroll lock that happens on the boss fight, but I guess you can just advance down here. You don't need to take the upper route. Yeah, this seems like it would have been the safer route. Weird blind drops. Or slightly bit more left of the level than I remembered. Not much, but... Ugh, that was a death I really don't feel like I needed to take, but technically we got there with one more life than you started the game with, so... Because we died once on Jaws, but we got two extra lives. Now it's the downwards level, I think? Two, three? Yeah, because we gotta get down to the graveyard or whatever, yeah. So how many lives do we have? We're on... Here. We have two lives. But I guess the screen doesn't tell us how many credits we have. I had to jump there because for a moment I was having... I was unsure about which button did which. <laughs> uh, did what, rather. Like, what's my jump button again? <laughs> this is one of those things you don't want to get mixed up about. Uh, it's mostly risk for confusion because I am playing on a Mega Drive controller. And for Master System games, I that means I use the B button and the C button. But for a moment I was like, wait, do I use the A and B or B and C? Right. I could possibly do a blind drop there, but it's a... Uh, if I guess wrong, uh, it's death. Earth there? Oh, it's facing the other way, I see. Lucky. That's kind of weird, I didn't even land on the other branch. A little bit lucky there, but... Right, I remember. Dude, oh! I always manage to shoot it without it shooting first. Four, but I'll... Or... Oh no! Shit! Fully embracing the slop. Okay, now we're, we're getting dangerously close to game overing. I didn't find a single checkpoint. I guess if I'm not even finding checkpoints, it makes less of a difference, but... Okay, that works. I didn't even fucking see that robot snake. Bit lucky there. It's a little bit scary, but still, like, feels pretty good. Oh, okay, let me sigh in something. Okay, if you press the other direction... You will land facing that way, even though the sprite doesn't change. Like, you can sometimes, if you flip, I guess? I don't know. Still inconsistent. Sometimes he turns around in the air, but usually he doesn't. But it doesn't matter visually which way he's facing in the air. You will always actually be facing the last direction you input. Uh, which is crucial because turning around after landing takes time. And that might be time you don't have. Wait, where am I fucking going? Oh yeah, this is the dude I actually shot from the lat- or... I think I saw a computer up there. I'm actually going to go after that because... Might need it. <laughs> Oh, I'm super confused. Oh. This is really tense, but it's a cool level. 
what might be my favorite level so far? Maybe because we're basically climbing. We're just climbing downwards. Still getting the thrill of verticality, precarious footholds, the ever present threat of imminent death by falling. Or uh, descending to new depths rather than ascending to new heights, but you know, it's all good. Dude, these insane bond stunts are <laughs> they're sick. <laughs> they don't really seem to happen the same way in the Mega Drive game. Probably because Shit! I missed the jump. We don't have the same level of um agility. Well Final life anyway. Oh that sucks. Like basically We're well on our way to doing 0% better on this run than our previous run. I saw it just as it happened. <laughs> like as soon as you fire the bullet, I was like, oh, I'm gonna get hit by that. I wanna get to the boss fight and see if we can All right. So you can see that I was facing the right direction there, but it didn't actually help. Right, so the computer is to our right here. We just continued, so it's going to be actually useful. It's a little strange that you can't slide on the vines. I got shot. It's funny how... On stage one, at some point, I got shot and fell down, and... It meant that the fault didn't kill me? Oh, well, maybe I was out of health. I guess I didn't uh, necessarily pay attention to that. I didn't really mean to do that. We're gonna game over before we even get to the boss at this rate. Because I'm playing terribly right now. No, wait, I'm supposed to go down here. I get, keep getting, like, mixed up on the route I should be taking. Yeah, there we go. Probably a little bit close for comfort. There's all these treacherous snakes. Kind of the worst because they're like they're awkwardly small targets. And the dudes you can kind of not manipulate exactly, but you can time your approach to not really be all that risky. But the snakes are always kind of like just sitting there perched. You might not, you know, have any kind of warning of when they'll shoot. Yeah, I'll just try. Oops, okay, sure. I didn't realize there was a rope there. Scary. Snakes are just a little, like, a little bit harder to predict, I guess. Nope. Okay, gotta ride those branches down. Oh, I still, no, wait, can I go down? Oh, I don't think I can here. I'm trying to go for a big leap there, I would have hit the branch. No, wait, what the... No, okay, I gotta go up there? Is that not where I came from? That must have been where I came from. Yeah. Okay, maybe I do climb down the cliff. I do. Okay. Well, I could have just dropped down, I guess. I, I don't know. I was panicking. Okay, we made it to the boss at least. But I think this is our final life. 
might have one extra. <clears throat> yeah, I guess like playing with the sound effects instead of the music isn't much of a benefit because it doesn't appear to be giving us too much of a strategic advantage. And the sound effects aren't like really anything special. to jump too soon yeah it's game over i didn't want to try it now because timing was like a little bit strict there but i'm curious if you can crouch the knife if you can i feel like well obviously it's gonna make things a lot easier the knife is so big it just i don't know that's the first thing i should try next time for sure all right let's let's enable music let's get powered up by bond jams And let's try this again. Let's try to minimize the amount of slop. And see if we can do any better. Like, there's not that many sound cues that you kind of need to react to, I feel like, because... Even though the turrets make noise when they fire, it's not necessarily something you really react to. Because I feel like a lot of the time, there's multiple turrets off or on screen and barely off screen. So the, um, the sound effects you hear isn't necessarily like immediately associated with a particular turret that you can actually see. Or, you know, it doesn't really give you advanced warning of something that's immediately off screen or anything either. But I guess ultimately what I'm saying is it doesn't make a ton of difference. Is a crate coming here somewhere? There we go. Sloppy with these guys. I was just about to say, I think there's a turret up here. Well, there was a crate also. Probably skipped a checkpoint if I had to guess. I was just about to comment before that, like, yeah, it's a little awkward to dodge the crates that are falling towards you compared to the ones that are falling away from you. But I was thinking, like, well, but as long as you're actually, you know, as long as you're just inching forwards a pixel at a time, you'll be fine. And then I did, and I wasn't fine. Ugh. So we've yet to complete stage one without taking hit. Remember that Bond movie where James was taken out by a crate? I wasn't taken out. Certainly, him being gravely injured, albeit in a fully recoverable state from falling crate. I'm sure that happened plenty of times. I mean, I might not be able to remember it offhand, but... I think it's fine, too. The animation's so good. Is this really worth it? I mean, it's cool. It's cool, so it's worth it. But yeah, points. Well, I was gonna say points don't seem like they're doing anything, because you get like one slot machine thing after the boss fight, or at least I have been getting one. It doesn't seem like you, because I was thinking maybe, you know, points would dictate 
number of, of chances you get or something. Like in some games, you know, you get multiple pulse based on collecting tokens or getting score or that kind of thing. But it doesn't really seem to be the case. I suppose, I was going to say, the manual, of course, you know, made mention of the ability to earn hit points, lives, and credits during gameplay. And I was going to say, it didn't seem... Well, it didn't seem like it could earn lives either. I thought it could only earn hit points, but what I thought was hit points turned out to be lives. Um, so I was thinking... Well, I guess credits might be score-based then. Like, if you get 100k, you get a continue or something. But what could be the case is also that each boss fight slash stage has, like, a different little lottery. So there's different kinds of rewards. Like, after clearing stage 2, maybe you have a chance of earning a credit. That's pretty fucking rough. That one-ups and continues are basically down to luck. I mean, there's plenty of games that have, like, bonus minigames of chance where you can earn one-ups. But something like, I don't know, Mario games or something, you know, one-ups are usually not that crucial. Here, they're quite valuable, I would say. <clears throat> I think Daniel Craig was the one that was taken out by Crate. Sounds about right. So this route, you can go up top, but this route is like easier and the cycle is like perfectly... <laughs> the bullet is like hidden perfectly behind the railing. Yeah, first easy. Alright, 1-3. I'm not going to get too overzealous when fighting Jaws once we get there. Oops. I should try to pay attention. I guess you don't see the score unless you... Oh, dude, that's sick. I slid into the exit of the previous stage, and when this stage started, he was still sliding. That's crazy. Fucking continuity between stages. Like, you thought it was cool when Half Life did that in 1998? This is a Master System game from 93. Pretty sick. How scary. That was a little dicey. We got there. Barrels, I think? Yep. I don't usually have much trouble with this stage, but... You know, it doesn't take that much to just slip up. Yeah, I think I was halfway through a train of thought, as usual. I was gonna say... I'm curious what score I was at. Like, what my actual highest score has been, because we only saw the recorded high score on my, like, last continue. But it would be interesting to see what the highest score is that I've actually achieved. If only to... Oh, you... it's weird. You cannot stand on the, like, middle row, but you can stand on the top one. Okay. Because if... Per chance, there is the... Uh, ability to gain continues from score... We could go some, you know, some of the way towards deducing what that score might be if we know how high of a score we have achieved without getting the extend. But I guess you only see the score 
when you finish a level or when you pause. Or after game overing, if it's your last credit. These robot fish. They're not in the Mega Drive game either, by the way. So I guess if we know that we're on our last life, we could pause to check. Get an approximation, at least. I want to say that we've been over 50. Well, let's see. Okay. I always get, like, freaked out because I don't remember how to do the beginning here. But then I... And I'm fine. Alright, that's nice. Stay there. That was scary. He doesn't usually do that. Basically, I need to visually confirm where he's going, and I don't start shooting until he's landed on the other side. I need to maintain full agility when he's close. Ooh! That was scary. He almost always jumps to the, um, the bottom level. I mean, generally jumps up to the second level in the corner. The screen blacked out, and then I looked over to my OBS window, and it was frozen there on a different frame in a split second. This man, that pisses me off. He must have been like one hit away from dying, because I'd shot him a lot. It sucks. Dude, it's blacking out again. Look at my OBS window. Earlier on, I was like, I wanted to count the hits. The fight is way too intense to try and do that. If I somehow die again, I would like to crowdsource some services from chat. All right, blacking out again. Count the hits. Because it's like quite a lot of hits. Definitely more than in the Mega Drive game. But obviously the fight is totally different. Like no comparison. I think it's good, like it doesn't, it's not tedious, it doesn't overstate its welcome, it's like, ends. It's cool because like, I was so confident, I was like, yeah, I, I've got this, I learned this, you know, we should be fine. And then I still take deaths, granted at least one of those deaths were, uh, yeah, it's blacking out again, I need to, alright, I'll press the button there. Change this and see if it... 10 points, literally the absolute worst thing we could have gotten, sick. I don't know why this is giving us no signal. I don't know. Maybe it's some fucking weird owl game thing or something. It's not the only time I've had trouble with this stuff, but there's like some weird signal warbly. Let me try doing this. I don't know. There's more weirdness going on playing this game with the capture card that I've experienced with, or... Yeah, I guess it's the capture, but it could just be my screen not liking the signal and stuff too, like... Because, again, the capture is coming through to the computer. Um, the signal that's being passed through is something's happening with it, and my screen doesn't quite like it. Because um, it's been my experience general doing capture stuff and video pass through that... What you're... The device you're passing the signal through to will definitely have an impact on how shit works. <laughs> <clears throat> better than Alex Kid Junkin boss fights. I mean, that's, uh, uh, that kind of goes without saying. <laughs> Was Joss ever associated with sharks? Uh, not in this way, really, I don't think. But I don't think the, the bosses are particularly thematically associated with the stages. Like, the fact that, that, um, Baron Samity, there's, like, graves and shit, um, I didn't even 
think about it, but that's not in the Mega Drive version at all. He just shows up in the middle of the forest. Here they actually like try to tie it together and created this little area for him. It's not like super spooky voodoo shit, but there's like the graves, like the, there's something there. Makes him feel like he belongs there. Um, but yeah, in the Mega Drive version, like he just kind of shows up and then you're in the um, lava caves and Mayday is just walking around in her like black leotard outfit, just strutting around and then doing karate kicks when you get close. And then in, in the shuttle bay, you're just, you know, jumping between giant rocket exhausts. And then all of a sudden, Oddjob is just walking around there, throwing his hat. Like the bosses are just there. Um, so I, I don't, I don't suspect there's too much of a, um, of a design or thought there. But I'm not sure. To my knowledge, or at least, you know, I wouldn't say I... <laughs> it's not like he's accompanied by his crew of pet sharks or anything. And yeah, that might be pretty sick, but... I'm trying to remember <laughs> if he was in the movie, uh, The Spy Who Loved Me. I feel like he probably was, because he's in the Amiga game. But, you know, that movie, it's this whole, like, underwater base. Uh, so in that instance, you at least get the, the nautical connection. <laughs> but beyond that, I'm not so sure. Oh, that's a satisfying jump to make. Snake. Platforming in this is so satisfying. It is satisfying as hell in the Mega Drive version as well, but that's like for slightly different reasons. It's like a little more precarious, and in some ways, I guess clunky isn't exactly the right word for it, but <clears throat> um, because of the whole kind of inertia and momentum and gravity, um, all the jumps are like extremely committal in that version. Bond isn't, like, light on his feet, really. <clears throat> so it doesn't... It's not comparable in it's in the specifics of how it feels. It sucks. Um, but on a certain level, it is comparable to something like Prince of Persia, where every, every movement is, like, really measured and carefully considered, or should be, anyway. Uh, just by nature of how the character moves and how you cannot change direction on a whim. Uh, and that applies to both platforming and combat, really, in that version. But in this, you can jump a lot more nimbly. So that changes. But, I, like, to account for that, there is a lot more jumping in this one. There's like a lot more extended platforming sequences. Atomic Runner with 39 months of unspeakable horror. Time flies indeed. Thank you very much for your continued support. We are inching closer and closer to completion of our next goal in the QBanch research funding initiative. We should be about 600 points or so away from the goal. Um, in fact, let's take a quick look. Thank you, Glowforge. We're at 14,370 out of 15,000, rather. I can't speak. Yeah, this game is awesome. Um, it's definitely a, a visual powerhouse. Uh, and it's fun to play, too. Of course, 1993 is a late game. Not that I know that it's doing anything particularly technically sophisticated. I'm not saying that to dunk on it. I just wouldn't know, really. Um, but it plays really well. 
I don't want to be standing on the ladder. It just gets weird. Um, but, you know, it reuses a lot of art. Although less than I expected, frankly. Um, from the Mega Drive game. And it was made by the Kremlin, who, like, did an amazing job with the art in the Mega Drive game, as well as The Spy Who Loved Me. It's like another top tier Bond game. So far, anyway. So they had some talented dudes working on this, for sure. Alright, so did that take me to the power thing? I forget. Nope, not yet. But yeah, this has been really, really cool. I would say, uh... Significantly sicker than I expected. Like, I was... I wouldn't say that I had low expectations of it. Fucking perfect height. A complete dick. Alright, we don't need to go down there, we're good. Don't stand up into the bullet. Take it slow. Computer down here. Quite here, but... I think there's another computer down here. So the computers are checkpoints. Yeah, there we go. Alright, yeah, here's the scroll stop. So the last couple of times I got here from the upper path... This is a little different, but this is how I did it the first time, so this should be fine. Got the turrets. The animation of that power core. Alright, can remain safe here. As soon as I shoot this, the scrolling is probably gonna break out a little bit. So now we can actually go down. I got fucked up taking this upper path a few times. Yeah, this path seems a little simpler. Dude, I fucking bonked my head and I died. Jesus Christ. Okay, well. There's a checkpoint after the boss on the up. Oh, I have to redo the boss fight. Okay. interesting like every single time I get like oh this is fine I know how to do this I get owned by something or other <laughs> uh, how much variety in the levels so a big difference in this one versus the Mega Drive game is that it's the same like missions um, but it's split up into multiple stages so we're on mission 2-3 um, or like 2-3, however you say that in English. Um, and that, like, the sub-mission kind of split doesn't exist in the Mega Drive game. It's just four levels and then the final boss. Um, but here there's three levels and then a proper boss fight at the end. Um, and each of the different levels... At, no, that's 2-2. Two, two. Fuck, we're not even on 2-3 yet. Uh, oh, we cleared 100k. Uh, how many lives do we have? We're probably on our last life, actually. So each of the, like, 1-2-3 levels, um, are pretty different. So we're, the first mission was the boat, and now we're in the forest. Yeah, it doesn't tell you how many lives, so I need to pause to check. One life. I'm not positive if that is our last life or if zero counts. I think this might be the last life. 
<clears throat> so the tile sets and graphics are some of it is taken directly or at least adapted from the Mega Drive ones. So mission mission two in the Mega Drive game is the forest. But because it's all split up here, like it, the there's more like the levels are longer. This game is a is a longer game than the Mega Drive one for sure. And the cool thing is that each of the like sub levels from each mission, um, they have kind of a different feel to the layout. Um, not least because they all kind of scroll in a different direction. So you can see in the in the top left in the HUD, uh, the little red and blue guys are like the hit points. That's my health meter. And beneath it is a little blinking arrow, and that tells me like what is the general direction I should travel in this stage. So we were going right on the previous level, and in this one we have to go down. Uh, did I just press a hardware button on console to pause? Yes, I'm playing this on my Mega Drive um, with an EverDrive cartridge. Uh, the Mega Drive is fully backwards compatible with Master System games. <clears throat> um, but of course the Master System has the pause button on the console. So just like when you're playing Master System games on the um, Mega Ever... or uh, uh, what is it called? The, the power base converter? Uh, there's a pause button on it. I guess this doesn't really show up super well on camera. I'm not about to lift up my console here to show you. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to tap the cartridge too hard either, but basically there's a little tiny button on top of the cartridge that I have to press to pause and unpause. Um, I always try to play on real hardware whenever I can, even if um, a little cumbersome and... Uh, if I don't have the original software. All right, so yeah, this is the, the climbing downwards level. It's maybe... Oh, I, I, there's a lot of slowdown in this game. <laughs> and it made the timing of that a lot harder to measure. So I fucked up. Oh, snake dude, got him. The question was uh, brought up whether this is like, will he eventually shoot if I stand here? This is better than the Mega Drive game. I think in some ways it kind of unquestionably is better. Like it has stuff that that version just doesn't, like the boss fights. Um, there's some like animation and stuff in this that's really cool. I fuck up. Oh, I should have just not pressed left. Well, if we were going to game over and continue on this stage, at least we did so early in the stage, so we didn't have to, like, redo stuff. Because the computer stations are checkpoints, but if you game over and continue, you always have to start at the beginning of the level. I guess technically this is actually the, the final stage that we've actually seen, because I have yet to actually defeat um, Samity. In my mind, it feels like we have, because we've gotten here multiple times, and I feel like I know how to do it. <laughs> I was like, wait, hang on, I haven't actually done it. Alright, so you can actually just wait for that snake. Definitely what I should do. I think I need to go to the... Yeah, you can fall off platforms like that and actually control yourself. Like, gravity's... Like, you fall really fast when you just walk off a ledge. But you have good air control. Like, I, I'd be hard-pressed to, to pick a favorite between the two versions because I think they both offer something that the other doesn't. Um... The Mega Drive version has an awesome soundtrack, and this music is fine, but there's like one stage theme and one boss theme. I'm just gonna leave that snake. Ooh, there's a checkpoint. Worked out. Um... There's like more variety in the music in the Mega Drive game. Uh, 
the the sound effects are super good too which in this game you get to choose between using music or sound effects and if you choose to play with sound effects they're like not that amazing snake Scared to jump in front of the... Oh, fuck! So that's the end of the stage, too. I, um... I hesitated for a split second. For some reason. So I missed the rope. That's pretty tough. Or at least... You gotta really focus. Do it! I did not press up. I tried to press right. I guess the diagonal counted as up. The game requires a high level of focus. I think it's really cool. Like, it's not... I wouldn't call it really hard. Like, it doesn't feel super difficult. Uh, um, It's interesting because it's, it doesn't feel the same at all. Like, in terms of how it controls and how Bond moves or anything. Oh, this is where we go now. Um, but it is similar to the Mega Drive game in that regard, like just in terms of the tension, because like it's not hard, but it's easy to fuck up. <laughs> and when you do fuck up, it's like punished pretty hard. <clears throat> uh, used to play Masters of Buddy, and one of you had to be on pause duty. Yeah, I remember that. All right, we gotta fight Baron Samity, aka Bones, enemy of the free world. Okay, I gotta, I'm gonna try crouching the knives this time. That's are so cool. Oh, okay. Well, you can just crouch them. Okay, this is trivial. It's basically, well, I was gonna say this is basically like the Mega Drive version. This is not true. Him teleporting and doing sh like. It's way fancier than anything he does in that game, but the strat of just sitting there and shooting is like bona fide Mega Drive strats. His sprite looks so fucking cool though. All the character sprites are just great, uh, which is true of the Mega Drive version. But the fact that some of them, like the bosses especially, are like more elaborate in this version is like kind of crazy. Yeah, dude. Holy shit. I'm glad I didn't try to jump the knives. Oh, he's exploding. Because he took a lot of hits. <laughs> and without hitting like three or four times per loop, <laughs> I would have to jump over a lot of knives. It is fucked up that the, like... Um, the jumping is like totally different. 5,000 points. In the boss fights compared to the regular levels, though. Okay, we made it 3-1. We're officially past the halfway point of the game, sort of. Uh, there's four missions and a final boss. Okay, I'm terrifiedly pressing this. Okay, so now we have two lives. Uh, I don't remember if that one life was the final life, but I think it was. But I think... Ah, oh, yeah, we game over it. Fuck. Well, we were at a, over 100k before we game over it. Uh, anyway. So 20k, I guess the score doesn't really matter. But we're at two lives, and I think... I think we have one continue. Also, we can determine pretty safely that the... Alright, we can crouch these guys' shots in this one, unlike the Mega Drive game. That's good to know. The elaborate description of the... Um, Stages. So these little alcoves, by the way, in the Mega Drive game, you can actually hide in them. Um, Rolling Thunder style. But they're just for decoration in this one. The manual describes all kinds of scenarios that are happening and that we need to account for. Things we need to do, etc. Uh, but much like I suspected, 
none of that seems to really reflect anything you really have to do when actually playing the game. Which is good. Yeah, I would say the level design for sure is better in this version. Uh, it's kind of like there's more of it. And the way your character moves around makes it, I guess, kind of more joyful to, to sort of move around and explore. And there's like a little bit of, um, like I said before, like the, the Mega Drive game's stages are mercifully un-maze-like given that, you know, what you might expect from a British action platformer where you have to rescue hostages. Okay, we need to go up further, I suppose. Uh, but they're not as, like, smoothly pushed forward linear as these levels are. One thing I definitely miss in this version is the ability to push the camera up or down to help you visualize what's above and below you. I haven't been a checkpoint in a while. The tile set in this stage and the enemies are from the Mega Drive version, but the geysers are unique to this version. Whoa, so are these things. I think. There are turrets. I don't think they look well. Maybe they do. Oh, I forget. Bond can run and shoot and like move pretty swiftly. But the one thing that takes a long time is turning around. So if you're like running headfirst into danger, uh, it can be quite difficult to adapt on the fly. That's another thing that makes the kind of movement on in this because you can jump kind of instantly and turn around quickly. So the better option when kind of caught in an awkward situation like that is usually to jump. And it creates these like funny, hectic moments where you suddenly are leaping into the air and have to like, after you jumped, navigate and figure out like how to land safely. I like the little warning you get from the fireballs about to burst up, like... Could have been an extremely uncivilized moment. Or hazard type. It's actually perfectly manageable. The only thing that's a little scary is the extremely inconsistent level of slowdown. Making timing-based platform challenges quite... Uh, Tricky to navigate. Oh, we did it? We cleared the stage deathless? We should be still at two lives. I guess one thing we definitely have to live with in this version is the lack of musical variety. The Mega Drive version has the Matt Furness soundtrack, which is really sick. Like, great music, um, but not necessarily very Bond-esque. <laughs> Ooh, fuck! Not expecting that. New life. Lives one. Okay, so this should be our final life. Well, I think I have one more credit. The, the trigger for when that thing starts to move is a little bit unclear. And terminated. Is that it? Okay, no. I have one more credit. Okay. So we're going blind here. This is my first time doing these stages, but... With a little bit of luck, we could conceivably make it to Odd Job. Excited to see what that boss fight looks like. I don't want to lead a little bit, and you'll be okay, it looks like. Alright, got kind of face left. Been like a nice, smooth difficulty escalation as well. Okay, that's some kind of a turret, I'm assuming. Oh. Okay, that's slow.
Oh yeah, like we had a pretty uh, rough uh, patch there on like two or three attempts that all ended <laughs> on the second boss. <clears throat> but now that we know how to actually fight the second boss, it's actually... I thought Jaws would be trivial once I figured out the strat, and then I managed to fuck up the strat a few times, and also have unfortunate game video feed capture issues that interrupted the fight. <laughs> so I've still yet to do stage one deathless. But it seems super doable. And at that point, you know, three credits with three lives or whatever you have, plus the potential of being lucky enough I wonder if I missed a checkpoint there. Um, potentially win the lottery and get an extra life. How much? Or two or three. Like once you learn the levels, I don't know, that's kind of how I felt about the Mega Drive game too. Um, I had a, a pretty smooth, easy time clearing it on a single, um, you know, stream. Oh my god! I just barely dodged. Okay, I survived! You can apparently take fall damage without dying. It's the first time I had that happen. That's, that's very good. I would not have liked taking a death there, because we've not found a checkpoint on this level. Should probably explore this... No, okay. <clears throat> I was gonna say, let, let me explore this area before I go up. There wasn't really much to explore in this case. Do a little idle animation with the his arm crossed. It's so sick. That's not in the Mega Drive version, by the way. I feel like the Bond Sprite is like somehow even better in this one. Even though I think it's mostly the same. Um, what was I saying? I forget. Man, this game is fun. Ah, okay, I'm alive. I'm alive. Uh, my life bar is mostly invisible on this stage due to, I don't know, the amount of shit going on, I guess. Or just something about the graphics. Nice, okay. So that was 3 2, right? One more stage to clear blind. So we had to destroy the power station on stage two. Oh, fuck. I was gonna say, I wonder if there's something, some kind of gimmick like that on this stage. And also, I was thinking, like, hmm, what are the odds that there are more lava pits to cross and <laughs> lo and behold, the very first thing. <laughs> it's kind of cool. You see here, like, we're in the same tile set. Oh, yeah, this is kind of, this is like the area where you fight Mayday. In the Mega Drive game. Like, even though we're in the same tile set, different levels kind of have different parts of them. Like, I think this game does a good job of creating a little bit of variety. It doesn't, doesn't feel repetitive. Like, going through endless identical caves or anything. Oh, okay. I guess we'll write this down. Yeah, like, stuff like that seems like it would be asking a lot of the player. But it's, like, perfectly doable in this, because the jumping is so good. And, you know, the slowdown can be a little tricky. Checkpoint, let's grab that. But because the air control is, like, fully responsive, it's not too hard to deal with. I guess if I'd walk- oh, okay, we can get that. I was gonna say, if I'd walked off the ledge instead of jumping, I'd grab a few extra suitcases, but fine. So the cases, I guess, are points and sub-weapon ammo. 
You can use sub weapons by pressing both buttons, and if you pause, you can equip. You can toggle between. Oh, hostages. You can toggle between grenades, missiles, and rapid fire. Rapid fire, like it's just nothing. <laughs> you can just shoot rapidly, which you can just do by pressing the button multiple times. Um. Some weapons don't seem super useful. I'm just realizing, I was about to say that, like, every enemy dies in one hit. But I guess you, you do fight a bunch of turrets and shit. So I, I could just have used sub-weapons on those. And you don't get to use sub-weapons on the boss fight. Speaking of which, we made it to the boss. Um, so getting the sub-weapon ammo is, like, not super useful. 007, locate and terminate. Enemy of the free world. Odd job. Oh, dude, look at him. Um, okay, how do I actually... I feel like I can... Let's see, okay. This is a sick fight. Oh yeah, so you die in one hit during boss fights also, by the way. Okay, first try. Uh, I have no idea how to time this, because like you press a button, I'm just gonna do this whatever timing. And it just keeps rolling for a while and you end up somewhere. Thousand points. We almost got three lives. Instead, we're on our final life. So according to the manual, there is... Oh yeah, this looks nice. It looks almost... As Whoa! Shit! <laughs> For some reason, I thought that was a ladder. We did get lives. Somehow. Dude, I'm... I'm just more and more confused. I thought we got two lives when I got the thing with the two dudes on it, but maybe it was health or something, and maybe you always get new lives after completing a boss? I don't get it, but sure. Uh, Alright, so we're killing scientists on this stage. Uh, I'm assuming... No, down. Okay, I was gonna say, I'm assuming there's an arrow pointing right, but no, it's actually pointing down. Yeah, they still have their little floppy hair. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, of course they do, it's the same sprites, but... A little less noticeable, because the animation speed and frame rate... ...is a little different. Oh, shit! trying to crouch missile, uh, but down plus both buttons opens up the uh, flashcard system menu. <laughs> uh, but the missile did actually destroy that turret in one hit, because they take like six gunshots or something. That's not like a terrible idea. Uh, if we don't beat this game tonight, which I don't think we will, um, because I'm getting really hungry and I think I might have to wrap things up after this attempt. And I'm gonna make sure to disable the system menu in the flashcard before playing this again. <laughs> Lest we have more issues like that. So I wonder if there's like a... Yeah. Oh. I was gonna say, I wonder if there's a checkpoint here somewhere. Um, oh, well, there we go. It's an awkward position. Escalation of challenge is cool. I like that you can actually jump through the ceilings. It's like, obviously looks a little goofy. But just bonking your head at awkward angles. And like, jumps kind of not working predictably. Is not preferable. So it looks a little funny, but... It, 
feels better, so I'll take that any day. I do think playing with music is the right choice. Um, and I do think the song is cool. But it gets, I don't know, ever so slightly tiresome. Yep, kind of looping this design around. So I wonder, does that mean that there's a computer down here? Nope. <laughs> Gotta be on the lookout for... Yep, turrets. I'm not used to climbing ropes. I kind of forgot that you can actually slide down ladders. Because you cannot do that from ropes. What's this checkpoint? Whew. I almost fucked up that jump. Ah, oh, it's off screen. I couldn't hit it. There we go. Oh, cool. Climb this little chain. Oh, I fucked. I hesitated. Okay, one life. Or if you can clear three stages and one boss fight without dying, we're good. <laughs> seems unlikely. The thing is too, like, it's it's tempting to think that, well, without all this research, if I just started over now, surely we'd have this in the bag. But I don't think that's true. Not from there that I could have gone to. Still gotta keep your cool and not fuck up. Not saying I couldn't do it, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't take it for granted, and to put it another way, we been, or um, continue this on the next stream. Whoa! I wouldn't exactly say it's a guarantee that we're gonna beat it first try. Also, I just noticed my fucking timer's um, broken again. Ugh, that's annoying. Uh, I'm gonna pause. I just noticed it was like over two hours a while ago. Um, so I have no idea how long it's been paused for. Um, but I'm pretty sure we're over at least three hours, because I've been streaming for four hours, four hours twenty. And um, I think we started at about like an hour and I've been taking one break. So I think it's probably closer to three hours. Um, how would I easily... Can I... Can you... Hang on. Um, can you like watch the VOD and rewind as... As the stream is happening. Uh, wait, why is this not real player? There we go. Um, I guess I'd have to like look at the vault. Well, we're not going to finish this. And if even if we were finishing this tonight, I'd have to piece together the time from the VOD. So I guess we'll just do it that way. Uh, in fact, I'm not going to restart the timer because that's just going to get confusing and I won't be able to know what time I should set on it now anyway. So we'll just leave the timer frozen. And um, we'll check. Because I think it'll be easier to put together. Yeah, because I don't know. I'm in my stream thing now. I guess, okay. Well, I, I'll, I guess this is good research to have anyway. Um... Because I'm pretty sure... Because I'm pretty sure... Ah! I didn't want to hear that mute. Thank you. Yeah, because uh, my recent broadcasts have... My recent broadcasts. And otherwise I can just go to the live thing. Otherwise I can just go to the... Stop unmuting! Which... And that doesn't help. Well, it is what it is. Um, 
we'll just have to piece this together um, after the fact. <clears throat> like super nervous about pressing the pause button. <laughs> Uh, so this is for two. Oh, dude, that looks pretty cool. Ooh, that looks pretty dangerous. Okay, there's kind of an obstacle like this in the Mega Drive version, but it's a little different. All right, I'm gonna take a hit. I'm <laughs> sacrificing. My eyeballs and sanity by electing to use a rocket there. I'm 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 about to die. See these things are like fine enough to deal with on their own. Um not so much when there's other enemies around. Well there's our final score. A high score, 35,000. Oh, so 500k, right? Yeah, because we made it over 100k. And I don't know how much more we got than that, because it only lets you enter the name on your final... I guess I'm not sure if you game over and choose not to continue, maybe you get to enter your name. But if you continue, you continue before you would get a chance to enter your name so you don't get to. Which is an awkward design that I'm not a big fan of, but whatever, it's fine. Well, we made it to the final stage. Well, the final mission. We made it to 4-2. So after that is 4-3. And it's kind of interesting. In the manual, it describes each mission and then it... It describes the boss fights with the term end of mission. So there's one one, one two, one three, and then end of mission, you fight Jaws, etc. And mission one, two, and three each has a so-called end of mission where you fight Jaws, uh, Bones, and Odd Job. But mission four does not have an end of mission. It only has four one, four two, and four three. But then after that is the final mission. And the Mega Drive game is sort of kind of similar in that mission four has an extra little bit at the end. You, you finish the level and then you get like, there's no mission briefing like there normally is between stages in that game. Which by the way, the mission briefing is so cool in that game. It's a little rushed and undercooked, but it's still really cool. Uh, and I miss that in this game. So there's no mission briefing after the end of Mission 4, but you get immediately thrown into what's, what you could conceivably call Mission 5, but I'm pretty sure it's just a little tacked on part of Mission 4. And it's just a boss fight, and it's the only real boss fight in that game. There's like some big vehicles that you fight in, yeah, some of these villains are in, but they're not really real boss fights. But you fight Jaws in this giant vehicle, and it's a cool climax of the game. It's pretty sick. Um, I don't think this... Hmm. I'm trying to determine if that was a part of the stage we saw or not. I guess it's hard to tell because the tile set is pretty identical. But anyway, uh, so the Mega Drive game has four levels. And at the end of level four is this tacked on little tiny bit with a big boss fight. This game has that same little tacked on boss fight at the end of each mission for the other three levels. But according to the manual, the so-called final mission, which is not an end of level, and it, I guess the game calls the boss fights extra missions. Because you actually skip them on easy. The boss fights are not there on easy mode according to the manual. But the final mission in this game that comes after mission four is not described as any kind of showdown with a villain. It just describes what sort of sounds more like an escape sequence. 
uh, something about rescuing a final hostage and something something that sort of makes it sound like you have to escape. Maybe something about a timer. But there's been other uh, kind of descriptions of levels that were a little bit more embellished than what we actually saw in the game. So I'm expecting the final stage to also be fairly straightforward. But you know, in the Mega Drive game, the final little bonus stage is like the most elaborate thing in the game, like the most unique scenario that doesn't, like, it's nothing like anything in the other, you know, the entire rest of the game. So they could pull something similar here. Hard to know what to expect. I expect basically anything but a boss fight. Which I think is a little bit of a shame, because the boss fights have been really cool. I really like them, actually. Even if Jaws is basically the hardest boss. <laughs> but this game has been awesome. Um, I I would say probably I like it just as much as the Mega Drive game. Um, I think this kind of controls better. Even if I don't dislike the chunky, committed sort of controls of the Mega Drive version either. Um... But I miss certain things about the other game for sure. But they're both, like, as far as the chronology of Bond games so far, these two games are easily, like, the top tier games. And I really enjoy both of them. I wasn't sure if this game would be a single stream game or not. I was absolutely not expecting the Mega Drive game to be completed in a single stream, but we managed to do so. This game, we weren't so lucky, but I think we should be able to get it next time without too much trouble. So I was thinking if we finish this game tonight, uh, we might get started on GoldenEye Saturday. Uh, but that's not, you know, that's not how things have shaken out. So I think instead... Hmm. Well, probably we will continue this on Saturday, and on Saturday's stream we should quite, you know, if I do a full fledged Saturday stream, that should be more than enough time to finish this. Um, we are not quite at the completed funding levels for secret mission number three, even though we're getting close. In fact, let us take a quick look at that. Oh, let's get some, some other music here. Well, I wonder if maybe this will just do that. Oh, the music's still there. Well, let's, let's I'm just going to turn this on. Uh, game info. Look at the cute funding info. We're at 14,370. So not far away from the goal of 15,000. So with this game taking at least one more stream to complete, that gives us a tiny bit more time <laughs> to complete our goal, which means that we might yet squeeze in secret mission number three before GoldenEye. And of course, before we get to play GoldenEye, the video game, we are going to be watching GoldenEye, the film. I was thinking maybe scheduling that for this Friday, but that was also kind of based on expecting to play the game on Saturday. I'm excited to watch the film, but if for various reasons the game ends up being pushed off a little bit further, I wouldn't want to watch the movie and then have two weeks go by before we start playing the game. So I'm going to hold off a little bit on scheduling the movie watching uh endeavor but who knows maybe we'll watch some video game movie this weekend i was um kind of hesitant to schedule something like that knowing that goldeneye is kind of in the wings but given that we won't have to watch it by saturday maybe we'll do some video game movie or something i'll i'll think about it tonight and um uh, tomorrow and post some update on Discord to decide what we're gonna do. It's been a while since we watched a movie together because we did some James Bond Jr. watching uh, when we were playing those games, which was fun, but it's not quite the same as watching a film. And uh, I don't know, it's been too long. We should definitely watch a movie this weekend, I think. I've been sort of um, contemplating rescheduling, like moving things around a little bit, because um, I'm not, I haven't been fully satisfied with how my Saturday schedules have been working out like starting the stream in the afternoon and then having to kind of wrap up a little bit awkwardly to try and have time to make dinner before watching the movie the same night. So I'm thinking maybe I want to do movie nights on Friday instead and possibly move my Saturday schedule around a little bit. I don't know. And now I'm, I'm on holiday this week. I work next week and then I'm on holiday for another four weeks. 
but during those weeks um schedule might change too i'm not entirely sure but as always um my discord is the best place um to stay up to date on information on upcoming streams and whatnot i usually say that discord or twitter is the best uh who knows about fucking Twitter now, especially now that they've essentially killed TweetDeck. I find myself utterly handicapped. I've been using TweetDeck since 2010. Being forced to like just go to Twitter.com and use Twitter that way, I'm like baffled how people use Twitter without TweetDeck. Um, I'm trying to figure that shit out. <laughs> uh, but even before that, I, I've not been super great about posting stream updates on Twitter and it kind of gets lost in the shuffle in the feed. So if you are concerned about uh, getting the latest updates on scheduling information, uh, stream announcements, etc., I highly recommend joining my Discord server if you haven't already. That's the best place to get that information for sure. So as I piece together the upcoming stream schedule, I will be announcing it on Discord for sure. And of course, if you want to join in watching GoldenEye whenever we get to that, and in the meantime, other movies, typically video game based ones, um, then that's uh, also going down on the old Discord. So do feel free to join that if you haven't already. And if any of that sounds interesting. Um, barring any extracurricular activity, <laughs> uh, I should be back on Saturday. And uh, we should probably be finishing up the duel for the master system maybe well probably something else I, i'm being a little overly confident here i guess but if we got this far provided the final stage of the game isn't some super impossible thing which granted the final boss of the mega drive game was a huge difficulty spike that i got really lucky uh that i finished on the like second or third try so who knows um but there's probably going to be time for more than just finishing this game next stream. Uh, but yeah, maybe we'll do some Street Fighter 6 grinding or something. I have no idea. We'll figure something out. Yeah, something fighting game themed might be might be good. Of course, we have like Mortal Kombat 1 coming out in September. And I want to continue playing through the Mortal Kombat games. We finished MK2 and I really want to get to MK3 before too long. I'm just excited about GoldenEye. And I also want to play Dead Rising 2 this summer. Ah, there's too much shit. <laughs> um, but before... Or, you know, striking while the iron's hot or whatever is the appropriate expression. I really want to rewatch Mortal Kombat Conquest at some point, but I want to watch a movie now for sure. Um, I'll, I'll contemplate what might be appropriate. I might throw together a poll. Um, we'll see. No, no, I understand you were talking about movies, Atomic Runner. I was just um, still trying to think about Saturday's stream. Um... We'll see, we'll see. Obviously, you know, we could watch The Legend of Chun-Li. We could watch... I don't know, Assassin's Fist? Is that a movie? There's a couple of anime Street Fighter things that we haven't watched either. There's there's certainly options. Um, I think... I, I'll just need to think about what I'm in the mood for. Um, I Basically, I think... If I think of a single movie that I'm really in the mood to watch, uh, we'll probably just gonna watch that. But if I think of a couple and I can't decide then I'll probably do a poll. Um, keep an eye on Twitter, and I'll have an update for you whenever I figure something out. Uh, probably, hopefully, tomorrow, but possibly on Friday. We'll see. I'll have something posted. In any case, um, that's where we're going to be wrapping things up today. This has been a very fun stream. I was excited to get to this game, and I think it delivered above and beyond my expectations. This was a really cool game. Well, it is. I shouldn't use the past tense for no good reason. Uh, I'm excited to continue it. I'm just, uh, as always, sweating a little bit over everything else I want to stream. <laughs> uh, I'm excited to eventually get to GoldenEye, but I don't mind putting it off if the reason we're putting it off is that we're staying busy playing other cool shit. GoldenEye is still going to be there whenever we get to it. Now, as we wrap up, let's see where we are going to be sending all you folks. Um, let's see. Um, why don't we send you all to Lord Bilbo? Bilbo 
always doing absolutely enormously sized gaming over on his channel uh taking on all kinds of insane games that i wouldn't dare touch with my mere mortal hands um i'm not sure what he's up to today Apparently he's playing Night Orc on the Atari ST, some kind of text adventure thing, and I'm sure it's way cooler than the Bond text adventures, which, as mentioned, have been pretty lackluster. <laughs> but why don't we find out together? Let's go say hi to Bill Bull. I'll see you guys on Saturday, I suppose. Until then, have a nice rest of your week. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. Thank you very much for tuning in, and have a nice night.